I got stabbed. I'm thinking I'm going to die. Now it's go time, man. How scared I was and how much I wanted to do and all these thoughts that are going through your head when you think you're about to be gone. The amount of urgency is just lifted further than you could even contemplate. To this day, that urgency and that flame under my ass, that it lit is still there. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to episode 51 of Ruse Radio. We have another returning guest on today's podcast, a very special guest, a guest who has just released a brand new album. Yes, sir. What is that album called? Hey, Meditated is out right now. It's your boy Jackman Raps, a real rock star. Thank you for having me again, my buddy. Hey, yeah. thank you for being here, Jackman Raps. Yes, sir. Now, it's Jackman, Jackman. Yeah. This album, uh, I imagine we're on our promotion tour for this album right now. Most definitely. So tell me about it. Oh, man. it's a, I, I, I love it. It's a great album, really. Um, as, you, as I just said, the album's called Meditated. And, um, I mean, creating the album was a process. It, it, but it, at the end of the day, it really just came out to be a personification of, the, of, of what meditating might be. Like, you got to think. For people who might meditate that are listening or watching, or for people who don't meditate, the first question you ask is, why are they meditating? And most of the time the answer is because they're trying to achieve something, and they're looking for guidance, right? And that's kind of what this album is all about. Um, if you read in between the lines and really pay attention to the track list of the album and uh, the direction that it, it flows, it really just speaks a story about... Um, you know, a kid who is just in his adolescence trying to figure things out and going through these trials and tribulations and then at the end just kind of learning to accept everything for what it is. Okay. Yeah. So making the album was fun trying to, you know, take that idea and put it into a, a vinyl is is a cool, fun process. I had a lot of fun making it and there, I think there's some good songs on there. And when it came to, like, putting the album together, then I imagine you were thoughtful about the where each song goes. If you're going through... It, I mean, it's not as if the, the album is a storytelling album per se. Right. Like, it's not like this happens and this happens. But you were thoughtful about where each song takes you in that process then? <clears throat> yeah, I think that's the perfect way to explain it, actually. Um, yeah, it's not like the songs tell the stories by themselves. You know, it's more of... Yeah, just reading in between the lines, like, what did that song mean as a whole, and how how can you apply that to where it's at in the direction of this album? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I, I always think uh, one of the fun parts about putting an album together is that, is figuring out what the what makes the most sense mm -hmm. as a listener. Like, where am I taking them through each song? And that, I couldn't agree more, and that's, that's one of the things that you have to uh, learn as an artist. It's because when you listen to these big-time artists like Kendrick Lamar or J. Cole, or really, well, let's just stick with Kendrick. His, his trilogy of, um, uh, excuse me, uh, To Pimp a Butterfly, um, Good Kid, Mad City, and Damn, and you can even throw in his latest album. Those four albums right there tell such a story in the album. And for that to be a whole experience, you know, you're... You're, this, you're not just buying a playlist of songs, which a lot of people have become accustomed to. It's just good songs. Yeah. I really prefer a full project. So you're right. When you're making a, an album, trying to figure that out is so tricky, but yet so rewarding, you know? Because it is a tough thing to do. And as a listener, because I'm an avid music listener as I am a musician, when I hear a full project put together and then I can connect the dots in my head, it like gets me high. You yeah. know what I mean? I just love it. So trying to make that is just, that's kind of why I make music is because I want other people to feel what I feel when I listen to it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what really drives me to make the music. I've noticed that um, even when I was in a band, that was an important thing was like, how are we going to transition from our songs from the album on stage like there's an ebb and flow to music i think mm -hmm. it's super important if you want to keep people immersed you have to have that flow absolutely it matters a lot it matters more than people even realize it's it's just like anything when it's done well you don't even notice uh -huh. how well yeah yeah and i think do you think that's something that just comes natural to musicians or do you think there is a method to figuring that out 
I think like most things, some people are better at it than others, but anybody can learn yeah. how to do it. Okay, yeah, I you can know? agree with that. Like it's because mm. it, some people have a sense of it. It's like, oh, this is not, this doesn't work, right? Like if one song ends and, and it's a slow song and then it just cuts into <laughs> <laughs> like that might throw you off. Yeah. But for some people, they don't give a fuck. They're just like, oh, whatever. Right. So I think that okay. it's, it's all about being thoughtful. Like whenever I'm putting a rap album together, it's always hard to figure out, especially if I've made all these songs throughout like two years. Yeah. I got some hard tracks. I got some slower songs. Mm. Where does all of this fit? And usually the slow songs go towards the end of the album because that's when we're right. starting to tamper down. Right. But it's like, you know, I've heard people say, too, you want to put those those songs that you think are the hottest singles right there at the front because you want people to hear those first. Right. There's a lot of I shy away from thought that. Processes. I don't. There is. There's a million, really. And like with this album, like I said, there wasn't, at least with my previous album, Lysergic Thoughts, I sat down and said, okay, I'm going to record an album called Lysergic Thoughts, and this is what it's going to be about. With Meditated, it was more of a... Um, I recorded a lot of these songs over a big span of time. So it kind of came down to, well, I need to drop an album. I have... I'm working on, like, 30 albums, you know? <laughs> if we do this for any longer, it's going to get banned. Yeah, so it's like, I need to drop an album. So then we come down to the whiteboard, is what I call the whiteboard uh, section of the creation process and we put all these songs on a whiteboard me and the team and it's like all right let's build an album out of these so you know but what's interesting is a lot of these songs weren't recorded at the same time but a lot of them were recorded in same time periods like four of the songs were recorded in one week and it really you know you can you can tell you're like damn he was feeling this way that week you know mm. so then we're like okay well if you recorded these then I recorded these ones this month, and this, this kind of tells the story itself. If we listen to these songs, you were feeling pretty happy. These ones, you had something on your mind. These ones, you figured something out. So we're like, okay, let's build these songs into a story that way. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and hold on. Let me make sure our camera's recording here. I don't know why it popped off. So when it comes to that, how is it then that uh, you begin to bring all of that together? I mean, I know that you had all these songs over two years. Matter of fact, one of the songs is yeah. one we even recorded here almost exactly two years ago. I went yeah. and looked, and it was uh, November of 2020 wow. is when we recorded. I thought it was not that long ago. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Yeah. So there so you go. It's, it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do, like, I guess to answer your question, it just... I don't know. And it, how did it all come into the idea of meditated? Because, I right. mean, oh, that's, that is okay. its own mm. idea within itself. Yeah. So how did you kind of decide on that? So the the title meditated is interesting because I used to be medicated. You know, I used to take, I was addicted to drug, to Xanax specifically. Like, I went to rehab and everything. I was, I used to medi medicate to deal with my problems. I used to medicate. Soon around the starting of the recording of the album, I began to meditate instead of medicate. And, uh, you know, as I started to do this more and I started to realize the benefits and I, I did, I'm sober now and I don't do drugs anymore, I thought, damn, I'm not medicated anymore. I'm meditated. So that's where the album title came from. And that, that is, that the title kind of helped form the story, you know? Because we put the all the song titles on the whiteboard and i had already had that epiphany about i want this to be called meditated so we're like how can we tell this story of how i realized that so in the beginning with the first song ride ride around it's the chorus right around my side of town you know just having fun da, 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 smoking weed that's where i was in life you know just being a kid being a young adult and just doing my thing then it goes into Demons on My Mind, and it's a song about, you know, the demons in your head and suicidal thoughts and, <clears throat> excuse me, and mental health in general. So, you know, it really just tells the story of how <laughs> I would get high, and then I'd realize, damn, I don't need to get high anymore. The power of your mind can overcome anything. It's a high in itself. It is a high, a very higher high, if one might say. <laughs> and that's really what made me be like, it's damn. the highest high of all. It's the, the highest. And, and yeah, so once I knew what it was, it was meditated, then putting the songs together kind of made it easier, you know? 
Interesting. Yeah. I like the title, too, because it, it almost suggests that meditation is a form of medication in itself is kind of mm. what I read from. Right, yeah, and that's what I love about art is anyone can pull, like, what they think they mean. And I, I thought of that, too. I thought people may think of that. Um, because that is what I'm kind of trying to say in the title is... Well, that's your new medication. It is sense. my new medication, yeah. yeah. And it just... Yeah, it's just the power of the mind. And the songs, they just make you feel meditated to me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> they had that effect on you. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So that's why they're on the album. And I can't wait to get some hard copies out. I mean, this is the first press run we're doing the album just came out a few days ago so i'm gonna get all the hard copies and uh, planning a show and everything i'm gonna go hand them out we're gonna drop this podcast so i just i just want people to hear it give it a listen because what i have coming next is very 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 different you yeah know? very different music i'm gonna i'm not gonna make a lot of rap music for these next few projects that i'm doing it's an interesting evolution too if you think about it i mean you went from lysergic thoughts Right. To meditate it. It's almost as if yeah. we're just sobering up over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we really are because the surgic thoughts was all about the acid really yeah. it was all about lsd for those who don't like, know lysergic uh, it's like what is what is acid what is it oh stand yeah it's for? like lysergic acid diethylme there it so, is lysergic thoughts is that was my last album that's about being high on acid and Asking the questions. Yeah. Really, the surgic thoughts is about asking the questions. And meditated is kind of about figuring them out. Almost. Mm. Like, you're still, you realize, the surgic thoughts, you ask the questions. The first half of meditated, you're realizing. Yeah. And then you start to figure it out. Mm. You know? So, it's cool. Kind of, the album tells story. Because the first album ever was The Basement. That was just 16-year-old me in the basement making music. Like, yeah. this, you know, these albums really follow my life it's cool that um art imitates life really it does i love that uh you can always listen to your older music as a musician i suppose you can listen to your older songs and it places you where you were at that point in time i mm. imagine artists like painters and all of that have the same exact phenomena you know it's it, yeah. it puts you back in that mindset that you had it's something that i think musicians have in a different way than anybody else. You know, music has a certain effect like that. Music can take you right back. Yeah, man. There's just something about music I love so much. Yeah. And it, it's weird uh, if you start making music when you're 16. It's like, oh, damn, that was me at 16. Yeah. Like, you just, you remember who you were. Yeah, yeah, you do. And that's why I think it's good to go look at your old art sometimes and just kind of put you back on track of, like, you know, when you're when you're young, nobody can tell you no. Yeah. You know, you're, I'm going to make a million dollars. I'm going to be the fucking biggest rapper in the world. I'm going to do this. Well, now I got a house to pay for. I got this and that. It's, distra it's fucking distracting, man, like having to do all this shit. So sometimes I'll go listen to 16-year-old me and just hear what I'm saying. And I'm like, damn, I need that fire back in my life, you know? I feel that 100%. Yeah. I mean, nothing kills passion more than business, Yeah. I think. And also, it's like life sucks the kid right out of you you know mm. the older you get just you you lose sense in that and the, and the happiest people are the people who have the children in them still alive yes bro and yeah that's why I, like if people tell me i'm acting like a little kid i take it as a compliment same <laughs> i'm, I'm like, like thank, thank you. you that means i'm doing something right <laughs> yeah yeah because you're right man children are just they have such innocent souls and they're just so happy and like full of life bro they've not been beaten down by any of the bullshit that we all go through on a daily basis, like, so I just try to, yeah, ch you know, channel that inner childhood and shit. Yeah. And I can tell you do too, bro. That's why I fuck with you. 100%. Yeah, I'm just a five-year-old boy yeah, on the yeah, inside. I'm it, not going to lie. Yeah, well, me too, bro. <laughs> Everyone should be. You guys hear that, bro. Bring yeah. out your five, your five-year-old energy, man. Go, go bite a school table, you know, <laughs> chew on a pencil. Go eat some glue. Yeah. Ain't no shame in that. <laughs> well... Uh, what when um when it comes to the mixing and mastering of the album, how did that happen? Was it you that mixed and mastered it, or was it? I imagine since mm. the songs came together through a period of time, some of it might have been you, and some of it might have been other people. Because I know that through Facebook posts, I believe you have started to dabble in your own mixing and mastering. Yeah, right. But well, well, first off, I just want to say shout out Christian, shout out Slur, Slur eight eight eight. Um, my boy Christian, he got this whole shit started, man. Shout out 3C Visuals, too, because my cameraman, Connor, he's on the album. He makes music, too. He's on the interlude. But him and Christian got me recording again. And Christian mixed 80% of the songs on the album. All right. Um, 
he's a wonderful engineer. He really is. And some of them I mixed myself or I got some help from anyone in the Creative Junkies, which is our collective. Shout out Lil Chrissy. I know he mixed, uh, he helped mix Demons on My Mind. I know uh, 3C Connor, he, he helped mix a lot too. And I do got to give a big shout out to my boy Tristan who made the beat for uh, the interlude, which is an amazing beat if you actually listen to it. And it was a whole collective, in-house collective effort, which I really like about it. I try to make all my music in-house, um, all the videos in-house, and just try to do it all with the team. So it was really a collective e effort as far as mixing and mastering, but I, I have started to dabble myself. You know, every artist needs to learn. I think you need to know at least how to mix yourself a little bit. Yeah, I heard uh, somebody say a great tip where it was like, he was basically saying that if you want to mix and master your own music, you just have to be ready to put in the time. Because yeah. not only are you going to have to take the time to mix and master it, you have to take the time to master the mixing yeah. and mastering. It's an right. art. It's an yeah. art of its own. And so sometimes you do want to just send that out to somebody else and get it right. But if you want to get that concept out right away, you want to know what the tools you have to use. Yeah. So also when you're in the studio and you're just next to the guy mixing and mastering, study that guy. Right, and I always do. I'm always... Got my eyes glued on yeah, the like, hey, what are you doing? Right yeah. There? <laughs> and and it is good to know at least how to mix a little bit. So if you are sending it off, Oscar, you Oscar. you at least have a uh, core like this is where the direction I want to go. If I send off a mix and it kinda sounds how I want it to sound, but it's just not right, then uh yeah, it's just good I I can send that to someone now and they at least see the direction I'm trying to go with the song. Yeah, mm. yeah. You can you can actually explain it. Uh, through audio rather yeah, than right. trying to be like, I want this to sound <laughs> yeah, big. Make it sound like <laughs> I'm underwater and a rubber band is getting flicked and you know, like yeah. <laughs> how the fuck are, <laughs> am I gonna am I gonna do that? Yeah. It's, it's very vague. It, it's not much of like a an actual description. Yeah, they're like make me sound like I'm sixty five years old <laughs> on my deathbed. Underwater, but also in space. You know what I'm talking about? Bro? <laughs> you oh, feel yeah. me? You feel me? Yeah, like, yeah, I got you. Hold on. Yeah, just give me like 20 minutes to decipher that. <laughs> the cover uh, art for the album. Yeah. So did you? Uh, did you? Did you draw that yourself? Did you outsource that to somebody else? How does that happen? Shout out Marty Dillinger. Um, ah, yes. yeah. Makes, somebody we want on the podcast, Marty. If you're listening, we want you. Yeah, bring Marty on this podcast because fucking go. Uh, go just uh, that's all i gotta say is go um i had sent that over and uh well i sent over the idea i said this is what it's called and this is kind of how i want it to look like and i get sent back like 50 fucking <laughs> 50 drafts yeah i'm like holy shit so much to choose from so i narrowed them down and then that's that's the one that we came up with but uh, there's like four more. Like if I drop a deluxe version, we got the cover for that one too. Right. Marty is the goat. Like that's all I gotta say. And, and I Marty's love the been cover. doing the digital animation, uh, videography, all that for a minute. Yeah, mm, I think at least a decade. Dang. Yeah. Well, a lot of talent. Like mm. I, I can tell it's just crazy. Deserves a lot more credit. Um, she honestly. be putting herself on on Facebook though. Yeah, hard. yeah. As of <laughs> lately, which I'm like, hey. Like, you know, that's what you got to do. It's if people, yeah, if people ain't fucking with you, like, you got to get your way out there somehow, you know what I mean? Uh, and you have to believe in yourself, too. Yeah. It all starts with what you think of yourself, in my opinion. You know, like, if you won't believe in yourself, that yeah. shows through your art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you know, if you think you're the fifth best, you'll, that's all you'll ever be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, you speak it into reality. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to... Oh, I want to say my favorite songs from the album. <clears throat> so I would say Humble... Mm. Mr. Wi-Fi, yeah. Me and You, and then Keep Moving. Okay. Those are my favorites. Those are great songs. I don't know if I can pick a favorite. No? I like Me and You a lot because it's so far out my comfort zone. You know? That's why I liked it because it didn't feel... And then, like you said, you're going to venture out of hip-hop moving yeah. forward. So I imagine that might even be like a sneak preview of where we might Very be well could be. Like I said earlier, though, I'm working on like 30 albums. So I, <laughs> I don't know which one I want to go with. <clears throat> I've been making a lot of punk music. Yeah. Yeah, like I actually have... Some great, I think it's good as fuck. Like, I've surprised the fuck out myself. Like, when I made this one, the first song, um, it's called First Kiss. This shit's a banger, bro. And, I, I, yeah, I just surprised myself. And I had a lot of fun making the song. And it's not hip-hop. Not at all. all. It's, it's rock, you know. It's punk rock, really. And I want to get, I know a band um, 
final boss fight music. Um, there are a couple of buddies of mine from back in the day. I want to get with them and actually do like some collaborations on some shit because. I don't know. It might be my. I might be crazy, but I think the shit's hard as hell. So <laughs> I, I'm like, damn, I'm pretty good at this. So I'm, I might. I think that's what I want to drop next. Is like just a, a little rock EP. Yeah. Yeah. And when it comes to making those songs, I mean, are you thinking when you're making them? Oh, this isn't gonna be rap. This is gonna be punk. Or are you just following whatever that vibe is? Yeah, I think the producer kind of is the most underrated part of making music the way I make it because uh, the beat most of the time drives the music. I agree. Uh-huh. And so. I think a lot of artists get too caught up in like, oh, I want to sound like Juice World in this song. I want to sound like Drake in this song. When it really should just be like, hear that beat, yeah. hear what that is, uh-huh. and then follow that. Exactly. And then sometimes it will sound like Juice or whatever, you know. But you're being yourself. But it was just me making what I thought sounded good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and that can kind of loop us back around. Uh, when you first arrived, we, had, we started to have a conversation. So the pink hair. Yeah. Where does this start? I mean, you did not have pink hair the last time I saw you. I did not. Um, yeah, just earlier this year, we were in, um, me and some friends were in Denver, Colorado. And the MGK documentary came out. And I love MGK. I, people probably could tell that, especially now. Yeah. I love MGK. I think he's cool and, yeah, he's hard. So we're watching this documentary. What I like about MGK is that he's not afraid, like, he, even in the face of all the criticism, yeah. he embraces that even more. Yeah, exactly. And he's just, that's just like me. You yeah. Know? So I'm like, this guy's cool as fuck. <laughs> I watched the interview. He changed his style up, bro. And it brought, it was a renaissance to his career, you know? I was like, I. I'm in a position where I was popping when I first started making music more than I am now. You know, I was throwing big ass shows and shit. So I'm at this crossroad. Like, damn, I need to do something different too. I need a renaissance to my career. And then you see this documentary. <laughs> yeah, I see the documentary. So I'm like, I'm going to take the same route. I'm going to change my whole image up. And it worked. And so far, it's working. Like, at the Glizzy Fest that I performed at, people, people loved me there. Like, I was getting pictures take. Everyone wanted to take a picture with me just because I looked different you know? everybody like this crazy ass white yeah, boy yeah <laughs> right i'm like perfect i'm gonna do this shit like yeah so now i'm just gonna be a rock star ass motherfucker and you know just be crazy this is light like like i told you off camera off off before we started i just bought a bunch of rock star clothes Bunch of crazy rock star clothes. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna be a big rock star. Now. Sometimes <laughs> I buy clothes. I'll be like, I'll be wearing them, and I'll be thinking, how would this look on stage? <laughs> all the <laughs> time, real. all the time, man. I'm like, yeah, I can rock that. That'd be cool. Then I get in the mirror, and I'm like, that's exactly. Oh, like, yeah. I, say, I put my hand to my <laughs> mouth like I'm holding the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how would that look? You're like, oh, what if I <laughs> did this? All oh, these. Okay. Oh, this way would be hard. <laughs> <laughs> We're all the same. All us rappers, we're just the same. Yeah, we are, though, man. It's, that's why I fucking love this city, man. Because there's so many of us here. Yeah. Like, you can't live nowhere else where there's this many, not low-level musicians, but, like, amateur musicians. Mm-hmm. Like, we have so many. Yeah. And it's that we can all collaborate, and we can all make music together. It's so cool. Like, you know, I, I think it. it's kind of almost like a Midwest thing, and this is why I love being in Chicago for mm-hmm. the same reason. I feel like Chicago's got that same vibe going on. Yeah, yeah, Chicago has it. longer, too. You're right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Like You can feel like there's just this musicianship that's mm-hmm. there, that, and, and it's, it's a creative energy yeah. that just doesn't really exist. Yeah, like I follow Chance the Rapper's career. Heavily. He's my favorite artist. And he came up in the open mic scene, in the poetry scene, like... This and just watching these videos from when he was young, I'm like, damn, they had a creative structure in Chicago, and you know, it's just it just seemed so cool. Like a lot of these artists, Vic Mensa or no no name, like they Kanye, all, Kanye, yeah, like all came up in the same kind of route, like in Chicago. Yeah, it's cool. And I think that it's like you have to. It's like what you said. It's you're surrounded by creative energy, mm-hmm. and that kind of pushes you forward. Yeah. Too. Like, having these other rappers that are doing the same thing, you feel Hell like you're yeah. part of something. It does, and we all help each other out. Like, me hitting you up, like, yo, I want to come back on your podcast, because you have a platform that can benefit me as well. Yeah. So, But I can benefit you by being a guest on your podcast. 100%. So it's just it's awesome that things like this right now can happen to benefit us both and to have a good time. 
just doing what we love. And you, you feel me? Like, I feel yeah. you. I feel like a lot of people get caught up in that too, where they're like, oh, you know, I want my shit to be the hardest. I don't want anybody to touch my right, shit. Yeah. When it's really the opposite. It's like you should be letting other people be a part of it so that way you become something bigger. Yes. Like people will see that. They'll see, they're like, oh, yo, I know this guy. Right, And yeah. then they'll want to know who uh-huh. you are because you're connected with this person. Yeah, like Odd Future, bro. Yeah. That's really, it was Tyler the Creator, but because he was generous enough to start this whole collective, I cared about everyone, yep. bro, you know? Like, yep. I mean, and there's so many people that came out of Odd yeah. Future. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I would argue that, like, Earl, to me, is lyrically ahead of Tyler. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. Earl's not as anywhere near as popular no. as Tyler. And I would, maybe Earl wouldn't even be as popular as he is now if it weren't for Odd Future. Right. So it's like, it yeah. pulls these people out and highlights them in a way that they wouldn't have been Yeah, imagine before. if we never would have got to hear Earl. I know, like, dog. What? I know. And he's got <laughs> such a weird thing, it's hard to even mark it. Like, yeah. what do you do with yeah. that? All odd futures, pretty. They're they're weird. Dog. They're weird. They're odd. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, again, it's like people get caught up in that. Like, oh, I want to be like this. I I don't want other people to touch my shit, and so they don't embrace that creativity and that positivity of mm-hmm. letting other people be a part of it. Exactly. It's, that's creative energy. Like when you yes. allow other people to work with you, you get ideas that you never even would have heard before. Yeah, bro. That's why when people. In the community, you put together like these big studio. I've been to like only one or two, but like a big studio session with anyone. It's the best. Like, yeah. It's the best. Because like, everybody's got something. Yeah, I'll go record there and they're like, ooh, that was hard, but you should say, you should do this, you should do that, you should switch it here. And I'm like, getting all their feedback. Mm-hmm. Some of it I take, you know, some of it I don't. But it just helped. Either way, it helps. Yeah. Because you know? yeah. your brain just can't do everything. You're never going to yeah. have every idea. It, absolutely. And some people just see things in a light that you would never even expect, you know? It's, yeah. It, it's the beauty of the human mind. It, it is the beauty of the human mind. You're right. Nobody's going to... Not everyone can have the same idea. Like, it, if yeah, if you play something in the room and everyone's gonna have an opinion on it. Yeah, Every, and so. a broken clock is right twice a day. Even that dumbass that yeah. you don't think is gonna yeah. have a good idea, like, he might come at you with something like, wild. Like, like, okay, no. bro. <laughs> That's hard, though. That's so true, though. You, even that motherfucker will say some hard shit one day. You'll be like, okay, let me, yeah, you're right, bro. You're right. Let me put That's that why in you got to keep them ears wide open. <laughs> you do, you know bro. What I'm saying? And, and I try to, man. So. Speaking of Flint and the and the mentality around here, you've been venturing out to LA lately. Yeah. So what's the difference there? What's the what is kind of the the pros and cons of being in LA as opposed to Flint? Hmm. It's hard. It's really hard for me to give an honest opinion because I'm not. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I'm not in the LA scene, but. I, I will say this. There's just a lot more going on out there. You yeah. know, there's just a lot more opportunities. I think <laughs> if we had Flint people, if we, all of us same people grew up the same way, but just in L.A., then we'd all be famous. Like, the fact that Rio and Y&J and, you know, Crispy Life and these guys can blow up big out of Beecher and Flint, like, these small-ass fucking towns, man. These are... Small. Nobody knows about us. They know about us for the water crisis. Yeah. So like for them to be able to blow up big, these are big artists now. Y and J and them. If, like if we were in L A, oh my God. Like I just think we would be the biggest thing ever. It's like, almost like the problem isn't even the creativity; it's the market. It is, and yeah. that's what that's what hurts as a musician is figuring that out. That having the most talent in the world doesn't fucking matter. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's like, I've had people tell me that like. Yo, what you're doing is cool, but it's not Flint. Yeah, and they're right. Uh, like I'm not a Flint sound. Same. But it's like I don't wanna. I don't know what to do with that yeah, information. I'm not gonna, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's true, but like, what am I supposed to do? Like, start touring? Yeah. I don't understand. Right. So, what? Well, here's what I could say, if anything. Okay. Give me your advice. I yeah. Need it. Well, the internet. Yes. That's our key, really. It's, mm-hmm. it's just now we can reach anyone, you know? But it's understanding how to work that system. Facts. And yeah. that's why people who are, like, mass marketers and they have the code cracked, basically, they make a lot of money selling that cheap, that sauce, you yeah. know? Because it is. It is hard to figure that algorithm out, basically. Especially like, when you just want to make music. I know. I just want to make music, man. Yeah. That's it. Like, I just want to make cool sounds. And you and, know when you make music... You know what you know what you're doing. Yeah, but it's like that's what I'm it, good when at. When it comes to changing that into something marketable, it that's gets what hard. sucks about being a independent musician because you have to do everything. Yes, you have to book your own shows, make your music, find your beats, maybe make your beats, record yourself, mix yourself, 
Sell your own tickets. Plan your own fucking everything. And not only all that, but when you're finally done with your big project and you release it, yeah. how are you going to market it? Right. How are you going to make people listen yeah. to it? Like, yeah. That is such a process in itself. God damn it. That shit sucks. Because motherfuckers why naturally don't hard. care. They don't naturally go and no. seek out your album. No. You got to force them yeah. to care. Right. Nobody. Exactly. <laughs> That's yeah. just how it works. You know. And back in the day, it was easier because it wasn't like there was a million other options. Now it's like you right. have to stick out from the pack Yeah, somehow. it's watered down now. Yeah. When they're selling CDs out the trunk, like... If you just was good music, it would get out there just yeah. like that. That was all they had. Oh, you got a CD? Let me hear it. You know, now you got 10 million songs in your phone. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> how are you going to stand out from that? So it's hard, but it's a fun journey, you know? I and, wouldn't have it any other way. I, I love what I'm doing, you know? Yeah, and it's rewarding, too. I Super. mean, when you get that feedback... The genuine feedback when someone says, yo, I heard this song from your album and it made me feel this type of way. Yeah. To me, that's the most important part. Yeah, man. I that, mean, I love it more than anything. Yeah, it, it, that's that's the whole reason, man. Like, mm -hmm. for real, I love it. I would, I would like to make a living doing this. Yes. Make money doing this. But, Easier said than done. Right. But just, it's rewarding enough to, like, make a song... E e either a song that touches someone or even just a song that someone enjoys. Yeah. They're like, I like that song, man. It's a good song. That makes me feel so good. But even more if it's like a meaningful song and someone hits me up like, yeah, man, that hit me. Like, I felt that. Then that's just like, whew, like that. I love this <laughs> shit, man. Like, I love this shit. I even shit. like it when, like, I'm playing my song and someone goes, wait, this is you? Yeah. That alone is enough for me. Uh, I'm like, yeah, it's me, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> that shit. Oh, man. You ain't kidding me. What'd you think this was, Kendrick? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Put me on. I'm the shit. <laughs> but, yeah, man, you're right. Like, and that never gets old. Never. Because it never gets old. From the first time I've heard that. If I heard, if I played you a song, you said that right now, it feel the same way, man. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, and I, I've noticed, um, cause uh, for me, the stage performance is another big thing. Yeah, it's like after I perform and people say stuff like that, again, it's the same. It, it like it inspires me. It make it reaffirms in my brain what I'm doing it for. Cause. Mm -hmm. A lot of artists, I'm sure, I'm sure it's not just me, you know, we're creative, but we're creative because we have this duality within us. Like, we hate on our own shit yeah. all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. we are our own biggest critic. Absolutely. So we'll hear our own song 20 times, and we'll be like, damn, this song's not as good as I thought it was. Right. But then someone else says it is, and you're like, yeah, it is. Yeah, right. yeah, they're right. They're That's right. why I try <laughs> to stay doing shows, stay dropping music, just yeah. get those positive, you know, affirmations and be Keeps me going, bro. Yeah, because it's bigger than whatever you're feeling in that moment. Like, and, and creativity is about embracing that and allowing it to be what it is. So, you know, you can pick on yourself all you want, but as long as you were that in that moment and you allowed that song to be what it was, yeah. it might mean something to somebody that you could never imagine. Exactly, Yeah. Bro. Power of music, man. Yeah, it's and the power of, like, of, of, of people. I think that yeah, people are, are constantly... <laughs> Uh, there's always something beyond yourself, mm -hmm. you know. There's always that's why it's nice to go to L.A. as opposed to Flint, because you see this different group of people, and you're like, oh shit, like this ain't Flint. This yeah. is something else. No cap. The vibe is completely different. Absolutely, that's yeah. a good way to put it, bro. The power of people. I like that. Bro. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That'll be our moral of the podcast. Power the power of people. Of people. Ooh, <laughs> that's hard. That's so, gonna stick with me. This is a big key thing. I don't think we talked about this in our last podcast, but uh -huh. this is a great story of yours, and I think it can inspire some people. So let's see what we can get out of this one. You were stabbed, Jack, man. Yeah, yep, yep. So yep. tell the people about that, and tell the people how that changed the trajectory of your life. Mm. Yeah, so the older I get, the more I realize it was the most important thing to happen in my life. Um but for anyone who doesn't know, uh, yeah, it was, it was, uh, let me take my grill out. This is an emotional moment. <laughs> we gotta take the grill out for that Yeah, I get the grills out. So, it was, uh, New Year's Eve going into 2016. And we were at a party, you know, we were kids. I was 17 years old at the time. And we were throwing a party or whatever. And, yeah, you know, we were just drinking and shit. Fight outside. Someone's like, your brother's fighting. So I run out there. You know, keep 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 this part of the story short. I, I ended up getting stabbed. I got stabbed three times. And, you know, getting stabbed, like, people, I don't know, like, at least how I used to think of it was like, oh, that's not as bad as getting shot. A lot of people die from getting stabbed, especially in, like, uh, 
um, England and shit where they don't have guns. They yeah. like only got knives. A stabbing is a, a serious thing. You know, you could hit a lot of stuff. So I got stabbed three times, and you know, I the way I was bleeding, I thought I was gonna die. And you know, where this, were you stabbed at? Um, I got stabbed once in my lower abdomen. Once here on the side, and then the third one, it went through my bicep. So, oh. yeah, it went all the way through. So, you know, this is crazy and stuff. Mind you, I just had got my first microphone for Christmas. So, a month ago, like a few days ago, really. Just got my first microphone. This was the start of it all. It was going to be the start of it all. We recorded a couple songs. So, you know, I'm sitting there. I'm, I got stabbed. I'm thinking I'm going to die. Like, it's over, so... It's that's scary, you know. I don't know if anyone's if you've ever had in like uh, what's it called a near death experience. Yeah, it's scary. Like it really is scary. It makes like, you contemplate things. Yeah, like imagine every this is everything we've ever known is what's in front of us right now. Like just the moment thinking like like that's all about to be gone and not knowing what's coming next. As a spiritual person, I was still scared to death, you know. Like, yeah. So. I made it through though. I didn't die. I'm here, you know. So yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they don't say. Y- yeah, I actually am. <laughs> I'm not a ghost. <laughs> but that, as you could have probably imagine, that like plays a big impact on your life. Yeah. So with us just making the music and shit, it that now is go time, man. You got to think the the amount of how scared I was and how much I wanted to do and all these thoughts that are going through your head when you think you're about to be gone, the amount of urgency is just lifted like further than you could even contemplate. So I think that's really, to this day, like that was years ago, that was 2016, but to this day, that urgency and that flame under my ass, that it lit is still there, you know. We instantly recorded, started recording songs and we got shows at the Flint Local and it was time to do everything. And as far as, like, if there is a, I do want there to be, like, a message to be taken out of it, is there's two messages I really would like people to take from this story, if they could. And <clears throat> the first message is, t- it is not cool to fucking be violent. It's not, it's not fucking cool to, I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna shoot this dude's house up. It's not cool to retaliate. I think forgiveness is the most important thing. You can disagree with me, but I think forgiving people is important. It's know? powerful. It is. I mean, it's it, it, another thing easier said than done. I yeah. mean, I heard somebody give me the advice once that you need to be able for, to forgive yourself about things. Like, even that yes, is a big... Bro. You can't just dwell on things and yeah. constantly think, oh, I'm a piece of shit because I did this. You have to forgive yourself because otherwise you'll never, ever move on. I think forgiveness is is one of the most important virtues of life. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to have to clip this part and uh, send it to a friend of mine because me and him have a conversation like this all the time about forgiveness. And, yeah, he he would like to hear that. So for everyone listening, that that's some good shit, man. I'm not even – I hope it hits you all for real. And the second thing I want people to get out of that story, though, is life is precious. Yeah. It really is, man. I used to hate life. You know, like, depre- depressed and shit. Like, what, what's the point? But, god damn, this shit's so fucking cool, bro. Yeah, it's the <laughs> like, highest high there is. This thing is, like, what is this shit? It's so fucking cool. We go outside and you can be like... We can touch the grass. You can touch the grass. You can look up. You know, there's a big ball of fire up there or some yeah. shit. Like, it's just like, <laughs> what is this? It's cool as fuck, though. We get to wake up every day and, like, figure out new shit about this place and stuff. Yeah. I love life, bro. And, man, if it wasn't for that, I, I don't know, you know? I think it's important, important yeah. part in my life. It gives you a sense of perspective on what life is truly worth, for sure, yeah. going through an experience like that. Because, I mean... It could happen any day. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen two months from now. It could happen a year from now. It could have happened three months ago. And so it's like, you know, I've, I've felt depressed. I felt, I've had stages in my life where I felt that way. And the way that I look at that too is like, I wouldn't be here right now if I hadn't made it through that. I wouldn't be able to have this conversation with yeah. you. And it's like a butterfly effect type of thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, there, you never know what's going to happen next. And you can't imagine, you can't settle on that idea that this moment 
this moment defines everything. Oh, I'm depressed right now. This means everything is depressing. Like, no, there's so much potential out there beyond yeah. whatever you're in right now. And also, it could all be over. You know, Thanks. you never really know. Do you want to spend your last day being depressed or you want to right. spend your last day out there doing what you want to do? Yeah, and just like we said earlier, the power of the mind, but most importantly, the power of the people, bro. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's the power of the people. It is, bro, because you can drag yourself out of that mindset, bro. Mm -hmm. I did it. Like, I'm living proof. Yeah, like, you know, yeah, so. man. Damn, that's hard, bro. Yeah. I love conversations like this, bro. We're touching each other's hearts right now. Yeah. I hope we're touching your hearts, folks. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that was a deep one. I'm about uh, to cry <laughs> on here. For real, though, I think that, you know, it's it's really important to to always keep that perspective. And it's, it's important to, I mean, not everybody even needs to have a near-death experience to know that. I mean. Yeah, you don't. No. Correct. That's a good, that's a good observation. But. It's harder. It's harder. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think going through traumatic experiences, though, is another thing. Ooh, yeah. Like going yeah, through a bad point. breakup, that'll uh -huh. give you a lot of perspective. Mm -hmm. It sure mm -hmm. will. You're right. You're right. It doesn't have to be near death. Mm -hmm. You're right. You can get it a lot of ways, really. I mean, uh, I'll say your boy right here. He went through a breakup once. Broke my little heart. But it taught me a lot. It yeah. taught me a lot. It taught me that, you know, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. It just sucks. It hurts. It's not the end of I the world. I had my heart broken, bro. That shit fucking hurt. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is this? It's I don't almost, want to I bet it was almost you. worse than getting stabbed. It, yeah, <laughs> honestly, though, I think, you know, that opens up a conversation, though. I think emotional damage is detrimental like mm -hmm. just worse like yeah. it's just worse and i think i like that there's such a focus on mental health nowadays <laughs> Me too. because it really is uh one of the most important things there are yeah i mean yeah yeah i mean shit can get bad physically she can get bad in front of your face mm. but that stuff that goes on in your brain is something that nobody else can yeah. really see it's something you gotta put a tamper on damn that shit's crazy yeah and it's it, i mean it's something that a lot of people go through. I mean, depression in general, I think it's more common than anybody would like to mm, admit. You agreed. know, it's something that we all we all wake up, we put a mask on, and we mm. go about our day. Yeah. When in reality, it's important that we address that we all do go through these things. And that's like what I said about artists. I think a lot of artists, deep down, do know exactly what that is more so than other people. Yeah. I mean, Robin Williams is a great example. Right. Uh, he committed suicide, but nobody would have looked at that guy and thought that he had that sadness Never. within him. Right, and it's just because he's able to he's able to fight through that, but also like he's able to use that energy and say, you know, I don't want other people to feel this way. Yeah. I want to give people the happiness that uh, I might not so be able to sad, have. Man. I just, I feel like, you <laughs> know, so it's sad, sad, but at the same time, it's almost inspirational. It is me. very. Because it, it speaks to the mm -hmm. the duality of that, that, mm -hmm. that even though you feel so down, you're, you have to use that energy in a different way. You can't allow it yeah. to consume you. Yeah. I mean, man, dog. Life is a complicated thing. I was just thing. about to say, life is just crazy, yeah. man. It's a trip. It, it's, yeah. It's the trippiest trip. <laughs> it's the trippiest fucking trip, bro. <laughs> it's so cool. I'm you have a great perspective on life, bro. You, like, you see it kind of how I see it. It's yeah. nuts. It, it's nuts. Thanks, man. I appreciate yeah. that. Uh, I'm glad somebody appreciates it. Uh, oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh, I'm over here thinking I'm retarded. <laughs> yeah, for real though, bro. I'm like, damn, these motherfuckers think I'm crazy, bro. No. So let's uh, let's go on to. Oh, I was recently watching our 60 Seconds interview, yeah. and you mentioned that you became an entrepreneur by selling candy <laughs> to go to Washington D.C. Can yeah. you elaborate on that? Yeah, man, bro. All right, I don't know. Everyone should have did this. This is this is genius. So they give you. They're like, hey, you guys want to go to Washington D.C for a field trip you're like yeah they're like all right well you gotta pay a fuck ton of money <laughs> you know so you're like damn they give you these chocolate bars they front them to you literally they front you these chocolate bars and <laughs> they front them to you for 50 cents so you're supposed to sell them for a dollar they're and then, teaching y'all how to hustle <laughs> yeah but I, I outplayed them because you're supposed to sell them for a dollar then you keep the 50 cent profit and goes towards your fund for dc i sold them for two dollars and then, you feel me, I got to keep the whole dollar, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I kept the whole dollar, and I had all this money. I was in D.C., had, like, all the bubble gum and uh, airheads and shit. I was buying candy for all the bitches on the recess playground. It was crazy, My bro. My man flipped candy bars. Yeah, but no, I, it was smart. 
Honestly, I, I can't believe nobody else did it. I, I thought it was genius. But that's how you know you got that mindset. That's how you, you got know. got that money, baby. Because you're thinking, why is nobody else doing yeah, this? Yeah, I was because on this you shit. are the salesman of the group. Right. I was like, bro, <laughs> I should have fucking... I should have fucking got a whole, like, ring of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you can do that tomorrow. Yeah, I should, bro. <laughs> you can. No, I'm going to go find some eighth graders uh, <laughs> that are about to go to Washington, D.C. and be like, hey, I'm going to change your guys' life. Like, uh. yeah. <laughs> you could buy a bunch of candy, sell it to them for more than you got it for, and tell them to sell it more than they got yeah, it for. I'm like, bro, it's, it's a, a pyramid, pyramid scheme, scheme dog. <laughs> Yeah, but no, that shit was funny, man. That's I, that's true story. Like, I really did that. Yeah, <laughs> and, it, and it's how you knew you're an entrepreneur. Hell yeah, yeah. Like, and I really am, man. I, I'm a like my grandpa always told me that he thought I was gonna be a used car salesman when I grew really? up. Yeah, yeah. Because I like I, I guess I'm cunning. Like I, you know, people say I couldn't be. So. See, my problem with salesmanship is I'm too honest. Like, I would straight up tell those motherfuckers. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I got this for 50 cents. <laughs> right, <you're> like, <laughs> tell to be honest, man, like, I, I don't, I'm going to give you good, you know. That's I'm too you nice. Yeah, it, yeah, it depends, bro. If it's like, I don't want to rip someone off. But $2 for a candy bar, you know, for a little kid, you, you got it. Walmart like, would do it. Yeah, yeah, Walmart would do it. Mm -hmm. So I had no problem with that. Used cars, couldn't do that shit. Nah. This bitch got no fucking muffler. <laughs> it's taped down with duct tape. Miles won't won back, bro. And you're slapping the top of it. Yeah, this baby's a keeper. <laughs> yeah, right. This, this, I drove this for 20 years, man. All highway miles. Oil change. It's good, man. They drive it out. It falls apart. <laughs> and it's so funny because you go to any used car dealership and read the reviews. Almost every time. That's how it goes. I could. I probably would never buy from a dealership. Nah. I usually buy a car from someone and I take it to a mechanic before I buy it, and I have them do a full inspection on that bitch, drive it around, and then see if it's a good car, and then I'll buy it. But yeah. a used car salesman, I'm not gonna trust that guy. Nah. Fuck no. <laughs> nah, cause you know what those guys are like. They're like you selling candy yeah, bars. Yeah, exactly. They <laughs> stepped it up. They. Fell too far, bro. They fell off the edge, man. And I've heard they do shit like too, where they'll pretend like while you're there, they'll get a phone call. Oh, this guy wants to buy this car right now. Are Are you sure you want to do shit like that? They some hoes, bro. What the hell? <laughs> Like, hey, man, Larry from down the road's here right now. Like, <laughs> he wants it. Yeah. <laughs> God, Final <laughs> offer. <laughs> Life is a freestyle. That was another part of our interview, and I, honestly, I can't remember if I heard it from you or if it was something that, because again, I think we do have kind of a similar way of looking at things. Yeah, you said that. Did I, I say it? Yeah. Well, I said, hmm, life is a freestyle. I think I asked you about your freestyle skills, and then you said, oh, yeah, oh, man, yeah. I've always been freestyling. Actually, I, life's a freestyle. I'm freestyling right now. Yeah, life's that was what it was. freestyle, Yeah. Life's a freestyle. And I, I yeah. and I tell people that all the time. Hell yeah. But I, I don't know if it started with that interview or if that's just been a philosophy. I think oh, it right. is. I think you taught me that, to yeah. be honest. So thank you, Jack. Man. Hey, you're welcome. I'm glad you, you believe me. It, it, it means a lot, dude. I think that uh, people need to realize that. Mm. Like, you got to roll with everything. Everything, yeah. yeah. No cap, man. You do. And yeah, that's what it's about, bro. And that's why I think I'm such a great people person and kind of charismatic it's because i just roll with it I analyze the situation and then you know react to it just yeah freestyle <laughs> yeah and it's like um another way of putting it too is like life is like improv that's another way i yeah. like to look at it is whenever you look at improv it's never you never go no but you right go yes and uh-huh yeah and that's a super it's a great way to be a people person. Like, right. take what they're doing uh -huh. and go with that. Don't switch it into something else. Right. Like, let it flow naturally. Yeah, that's, that's true. I sh I'm going to start using that because that is what they do in improv. You're right. And, and it works. It works. Yeah. It works. Uh -huh. I mean, it, it, it's tough sometimes, but, like, if motherfuckers acting weird... Act weird. Like, yeah. Don't, don't, yeah. Don't act I'm going to match your energy, bro, yeah. every time. It don't matter. That's why, like, you ever had that kid in school that, like, nobody liked he might have been like a little slower but oh yeah you know what i'm talking about like that kid yeah i was always best friends with him bro. me too best fucking friend that was my fucking dog that's I what let, i sat with at lunch yeah right and i wouldn't let nobody talk shit to him or nothing because yeah like just what do you mean he came up to me one day was like hey what's up i was like hey 
you know, then he talked, I talked, and we're friends now. Everyone else hates him. I'm like, why? Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> they're tripping, dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and those kids always got, like, cool little niche things about them, too. Uh, uh, there was this one kid who collected a bunch of shit. Three years after high school, I hit him up. He gave me a tire. Man. I needed a tire for my car. He had one. Man. It's like you never know when you those connections know. are going to come yeah, in like, handy. This kid I'm talking about, he, he makes, he, like, um, he loves movies. Yeah. He about, this motherfucker wrote a whole movie script. This is like a year ago after high school. Ho- wrote a whole movie script, sent it to me. He's like, we- read this. This is phenomenal, bro. <laughs> phenomenal. I'm we got like, Scorsese over yeah, here. Yeah, it was good <laughs> as fuck. I'm like, damn, okay, dude. Like, it was pretty hard. But you got to see that good in people, you yeah, know? Yeah, and I always do. I think a lot of people, they get they get kind of jaded about shit, and they're like, oh, well, that's a weird guy. Like, no, you're just looking at it wrong. Yeah, like, you Like, there's are. much more to that guy than you're seeing right here. Like, what if you looked weird? Yeah. What if you acted weird? Right. You think fucking people would treat you the same yeah, way they do? right. Like, life ain't that easy, dog. Yeah, and people probably think I'm weird. Yeah. You know, like... And I am weird. Yeah, me too. <laughs> weird as fuck. cool fun. to be weird. I agree. Dude, I... Th- I, that's a message of mine. It always has been too. It's cool as fuck to be yourself. It's cool as fuck to be weird, bro. That, it's, it's cool as fuck to be different. Yeah. yeah, I think that confidence speaks to people in a way that is beyond our understanding. Even like True that, that, people see you being weird, but you're confident about it. They're like, oh shit. Well, if he can do that, then right. I guess it's not that hard. Yeah, because I remember tr- like when I first got into high school. It's like, oh, high school. I was trying to be cool and shit. It wasn't working. I eventually was just like didn't care. I was like, fuck this. Me and my friends, we just didn't care. That's when everyone started to give a fuck about what we had to say. I was like, oh, the confidence yep. in yourself is what people like. Mm-hmm. And that's why I tell everyone that now. I'm like, if you just be yourself, people are going to like you. I promise. But you have to be confidently yourself. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Don't question yourself. Yes, yeah. and. You got to yes, yes, and yourself. And. Exactly. You know? Like when you say something funny, just roll with it. Even right. if you think it was weird, ah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah I no could cap. die tomorrow, dog. Like, hey, shout out my bro Roach, bro, because... That's Roach right there, bro. Yeah. The weirdest motherfucker, the funnest motherfucker, bro. My best friend, really, one of my best friends. He's just like that, bro. And, yeah, shout out Roach, bro. He rolls with it, bro. He'll say the stupidest shit. You want to hear what that guy (laughs) has to say. Yeah, every day, bro. You want to bring him to the function. If he opens his mouth, I'm listening, bro. It's always (laughs) something good, bro. Shout out Roach, bro. It really is true, though. Like, the people who are unapologetically themselves are the ones that are going to think outside the box. Yeah. These motherfuckers just, they, oh, that's not cool. I can't say that. And so they just hold these thoughts in. Yeah. Where it's like, no, dog, you let it all out. Uh And then we see what's on the table. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some shit in there, dog. No cap, bro. Yeah. That's, That's how I feel. That's literally how I work that's how my mind works <laughs> i think that's kind of the beauty of music in my mind too is it allows me to do that in a way like that's kind of why i've always loved making music is whenever i'm making a song i know for a fact nobody's gonna make the song that right. i'm gonna make yeah it's just impossible <laughs> it's impossible yeah. yeah oh bro i got a question for you okay all right for christmas i'm getting a saxophone oh shit yeah i really want to learn to play saxophone you're pretty you you know you good at keys you know, a little like, bit. I right. know a little bit. I, well, you're pretty musically inclined. Yeah. So I'm going to need your help. Okay. Learning that shit, bro. Ooh. And then we're going to fucking... Ooh, yeah, yeah, bro. We can jam. Yeah. <laughs> having, having a motherfucking saxophone, that, that's such a smooth instrument, man. How about this? If you, you learn saxophone, I will dedicate myself to actually learning the keyboard. All right, big bet. Because... I have, there was a point in time where I was really getting into music theory and I was like, and they got free music theory lessons I know. on YouTube. Yeah. I that's saw where that. it all starts. Yeah. You is just, mm-hmm. understanding what is happening musically. Right. You can learn an instrument, but I feel like once you know music theory, you can apply that to any instrument. Yeah. You could go hop on a keyboard. You can hop on a saxophone. You can hop on a fucking trumpet. You can hop no on. No cap, because now yeah. you know how it works. Exactly. Like, <laughs> you know and what it's I mean? all that i mean of course you can think outside the box you don't always have to follow the rules right but those rules matter they're fundamental yeah, yeah. it's mm. like you you learn the building blocks and you go from there yeah then you you uh innovate you fuck around yeah. and find out uh, you do yeah fuck around and find out right? <laughs> yeah, I, know. <laughs> the meme. I know the meme you're talking about <laughs> it's just so funny but for real it's it's very uh i think that learning an instrument can also help a lot with even writing your own music because yeah. when you're approaching it vocally, your mm. vocals are a fucking instrument. Absolutely, dude. yeah. I mean the way the way that you 
what I've been fucking around a lot with a lot lately is when I was in a band is when I really learned this because that's when I started to really switch my voice up. I mean, before that, I was always doing this high-pitched rap voice thing. Uh. And then I realized, like, oh, when I sing, that's not my natural inclination. Uh. Like, I go into, like, when I was, um... If all I see is all I be there. I'll go into this weird fucking thing. I don't know what yeah, that is. Yeah, but that's what feels right. But it felt shit. right. Uh-huh. Exactly. That's and what so, I learned on this album. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. No, it's cool. But um, I did a lot more singing on this album. And that's what I am kind of started to learn, too. And now, that's exactly how it worked, actually. I was trying to do it how I thought it should be. But then I was just kind of did what felt the most natural. Yeah. And then I was like, that sounds better. That sounds the best, too. You yeah. Know? And so it's just that. feeling that out. It's like, mm-hmm. what is this moment? Not what what am, what am I, but what is this song requiring? Because yeah. Yeah. it's beyond you. Uh, it's beyond facts. Ruse the Rapper. Yeah. It's beyond Jackman Raps. Yeah. It's like... What is this music right, right here? What is this melody? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Music's so cool, bro. Music is it cool. Chills, man. Like, I think it speaks beyond uh like like the the best music can resonate in a way that you don't even understand. I love when people tell me I don't normally listen to rap, but your music I fuck with. Yeah. Cause that says to me, I'm not a rapper. Right. I'm something else. I'm, yeah, you're a whole artist, bro. Yeah. And it's uh. like uh, you know, Eminem did that for a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people didn't yeah. really like rap much, right. and then they would hear Eminem songs. They'd be like, "Oh, I get this. Yeah, I can understand mm-hmm. what's happening here." Right. And it's weird how certain music can just resonate different with you because I feel like um, X X Success Oh like, yeah, he switched things up. Yeah, his music just hit me some different way, bro. Or I, I love it. I know? love that like, he constantly explored with the sound. Yeah, too. he never allowed himself to get boxed in. Right. Because he could have easily stuck with that early SoundCloud thing he had going on. Like that scream. But he switched to a whole different thing. He started doing pop music, essentially. And it was even better than his SoundCloud shit. I loved it. And you know that he was doing the same thing we're talking about. Right. Like he would hear those beats and he would just let himself flow. He wasn't trying to be X. Right. You know? He was just doing it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I've noticed a lot of people, too, they'll give you bad advice. They'll say, you need to find your niche. You need to find your sound. Right. Stick with it. Uh-huh. Like, that is bullshit. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to fuck with that either. Yeah, because I well, <laughs> I can't fuck with that because these next albums are all. No, I'm dropping twenty different genres. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna drop some opera music. <laughs> and sure, like some people might like the people who liked your rap shit might hear that opera music and be yeah. like, "Whoa, what the fuck is? Whoa, right. what's yeah. he doing there?" But someone else might be like, "Hey, Jackman raps opera album though. That shit hard." Like, and it's that confidence we're uh, talking about. Yeah. like the fact that you're confidently approaching the music yeah. and letting it be that that's what speaks to people Thanks. they're like oh he's being himself i mm. like that yeah 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 and then they just fuck with it either way he ain't trying yeah. to be playboy cardi right and yeah that's why a lot of people fuck with me though they tell me that straight up they're yeah like, i like you because you just be yourself bro yep. i'm like thanks like, it know? speaks to people man yeah. it, it means a lot i think that again it's it's something that speaks to people in a way they don't even understand like they see it and it's subconscious. They're uh-huh. like, oh, we can do that. Yeah, right. That's allowed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because people get all buttoned up. And they, they, be- they believe that shit. Or you hang out, hang around enough people that are buttoned up like that. Yeah. And you start to think, oh, I got to get cool. I, got, mm-hmm. I can't be mm-hmm. weird around these guys. Right, yep. I, I just don't. I say don't even allow that energy. Because I've noticed throughout everything I do, the reason, like, I'll be, I'm, I'm a server. And... Serving tables is the same shit. It's like, yeah, you can walk up to the table and go by the book. You can be like, hi, how are you? Blah, 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 right. blah, blah. No, yeah. just be yourself. Yeah, you're like, what's up, y'all? Yeah. Or whatever. You they know? love yeah. that. Uh, yeah, they do. That they makes do. me happy if I'm at... Yeah, if you, if you came up to my table... And was all fucking giggly and happy. I'd be like, this guy is cool. Like, you know, like, I fuck with him. I'm going to leave him a fat tip, you know? Exactly. Yeah. They're like, oh, this guy's a bro. Yeah, he's cool. Right. Like, he's one of us. He ain't trying to act cool. He just is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel that. It is, it is all confidence, man. And just realize that. Realize that shit. <laughs> Folks, we're giving you golden nuggets yeah. right here. Jesus. Confident. Gosh dang it. We can't do this forever. I'm a fucking artist. I can't be trapped, bro. They're trying to (laughs) mentally imprison my mind. They won't let me get the word out. You don't got the answers, Bruce. I'm just like... So, so I was actually about to head that direction. So, 
I don't know how we're going to jump into this topic, but I think it should be addressed. Yeah. Because I think Kanye is one of the people that does this the best. Okay. All the time. I mean, no matter what it is, Kanye is unapologetically himself. Hell that gets yeah. him in some shitty spots. Oh, yeah. But he is unapologetically. Yeah, he don't want to. He's himself. Yes. Bro. I like Kanye. I love Kanye. Yeah. <laughs> I love Kanye. And and I love Kanye despite any mistakes he might make because I see the human inside of Kanye. Yeah, we're all just people, bro. If I said anything Kanye said, no one would give a fuck. Exactly, <laughs> dog. No one like, would give a fuck. Uh, you might like lose Facebook access for a week. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be it. Literally though. So I don't fucking care. He's just telling us what he sees and what he thinks, whether he's right or wrong. He's just telling us his experience, bro. And the thing is, that's what led to Kanye's best shit. Yeah. Like, y'all are acting like this isn't the same guy. Right. It's the same it's guy. It's the same guy, yeah. Like, you, just, you guys weren't listening to him with the same level of, of yeah. importance before. Uh, you weren't fucking elevating it to, oh, this is dangerous. Yeah, he You just, were just fucking, oh, that was wild. Yeah, <laughs> is that right? <laughs> And of course he's got he's probably taken that and been like, Oh shit, I can go a little farther than this. Right. right. <laughs> he's got right. a little yeah, he more stretched extreme. It, stretched it out a little. But it's like, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. You were fucking <laughs> Kanye, dog. You're one of the fucking richest musicians ever. Ever, bro. Just say what you want to say. Yeah, like say how you feel, bro. Yeah. Like honestly, I would. And, and there's a lot of love in like people again, they're not looking at the human in there. They read a headline. Like Kanye is a real person. There's so much love inside of yeah. what he, what and he's fighting for. I don't think he's he didn't say anything like he was hating. He didn't say he hated anyone. He wasn't I mean? trying to. I right? Don't think. Yeah. He might have right? said it. He might have. <laughs> he might have got that. Yeah. Like, he, but it's not, he didn't actually say like, "Hey, I hate people." Exactly. But it's kind of like uh, the whole. Uh, who is that? Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Kyrie Irving tweeted that, or he posted he that video. It, yeah. Everybody said what they thought Kyrie Irving meant, and right. then Kyrie Irving comes right out and says, "No, I, I, I know I'm not anti-Semitic." Because I know I'm not anti-Semitic. Yeah. Y'all are crazy. Right. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Y'all are out of your mind. Yeah. But it's like, you can only say what you feel. Other right. people might misinterpret it, but it's like, in the end, you got love in your heart, you mm -hmm. got hate in your heart. Yeah. And Kanye. He's got love. He got love yeah. in his heart. He mm -hmm. might have said things the wrong way, but Thanks. in the end, it's like, what are you fighting for? Yeah. What is it that you're trying to get at? And I think people just extrapolate way too far beyond that. Yeah. It's like, get I agree. to the person in there. Right. Stop See why, trying to exaggerate mm, shit. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you really listen to him, he's really just saying, like, I'm getting controlled and fucked over. And if you're in Hollywood, which you probably are. Yeah, right. It's yeah. just like maybe he's placing that in the wrong spot. Yeah. Maybe he's addressing the wrong people. Right. But you do get fucked over. Mm -hmm. I mean, fucking look at Jim Carrey. Yeah. Jim Carrey he tries to say shit over all the time. Dude. Yeah. He, he be, bro, he be trying to leak all the secrets. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Carrey's hard. I fuck with him. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Jim Carrey. He's another guy that like. He gets the bad, a bad rep, especially not so much now as he did five or ten years ago. But uh, when he started growing the beard and getting yeah, all spiritual, yeah. people were acting like he's crazy. I'm uh -huh. like, dog, I want to be that guy. Yeah, me too, bro. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't think he's crazy. He's, he knows what he's doing, bro. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And he's just open-minded. Like, you watch him in interviews, and he's just chilling he's out. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or he's acting weird, but it's cool. Like, that's what y'all motherfuckers liked him for in the first right. place. Why are you getting upset now? God, that's so true, bro. <laughs> yes. Like, he's doing, yeah, he's like, where are we right now? Just like being weird and funny. He's like, I am not a human. Yeah. Okay, he's not a human. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I believe him. See, they need to have you on the motherfucking red carpet, bro. That, I would pay to see that, bro. <laughs> they couldn't you, handle me. I know. <laughs> That'd be awesome, bro. <laughs> I'd be too positive. They'd be like, we need to get him out yeah, of here. Yeah, get this guy out he's of here. He's making people too, he's making them love each other. Right? It's not good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We gotta, we gotta cancel this now. It's dangerous. <laughs> and that's the thing, man. I almost get the sense that, like, you can't have too much love in your heart or else motherfuckers, they twist your words and shit, dog. They oh, twist yeah. twist your words. Yeah. Like, everything we just said just now, they would find a way. Oh, yeah. They could clip, like, two parts and be like, see... Jack's fucking evil. Like, <laughs> what the hell? Jackman said Kanye didn't say anything wrong. Right. right yeah. Boom. Perfect. There right it there. is. And that just starts conversation. Like, what? Nobody actually watches it. Yep. You know, and then boom. It's fucked up. That's the danger of it. Yeah. It's like, I think that um, it's tough because 
I don't even know what the solution is. I mean, I know. motherfuckers hear what they want to hear a lot of the time. And so it's like, even if you're speaking with love as a guiding force and yeah. you're preaching that, they still, it's, it doesn't mm. even come through the right way if your ears are already hearing hate. Yeah, they've made up their mind about something already. Yeah. Then they're definitely not going to hear you. Yeah. You know? It sucks, dog, because I'm telling you. I'm yeah, telling you, they, we need to get me on the red carpet, me and Jack, man. See? And we'll just fucking wear peace shirts. Yeah. We'll become hippies. <laughs> well, you'll be punk, I'll be the hippie. All right, there we go. So we can match, we can relate with anyone here. Yes. You know what I, mean? I mean, I got the 60s mustache already. Yep, you know get it going saying? a little stronger. We're good to go, bro. Exactly. Bring it down a little, like one of these ones. You think so, Fu Manchu? That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be hard. <laughs> See, I get, for right now, I get porn star and cop a lot. Those are the two Those things are both, bro. And it's they're both porn, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're both right. I love it. <laughs> it's fucking great. Bro. But at the same time, like you think you think are or cop. <laughs> it would pick your choice. Like that's hilarious. It's kind of a litmus test, right? Like, of the person. When they say porn star, I'm like, all right, you're cool. I can't. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get there quite. Like I should I see what happens if I just grow it out because it's pretty patchy. But I think if I grew out my mustache, it would look like. Something you've never seen before. That's how this started. Like something a little kid would draw or something. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what mine would look like. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like from a child's imagination. Yeah, like literally. <laughs> never before seen shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, this started as uh, in 2020 when COVID happened. Uh, that was actually, I was like, you know what? I'm not shaving. Yeah, yeah, fuck it. I'm just sitting at home. Yeah, I'm at home. Nobody's hey. going to really judge me here. Uh, right, you know, I'm really good now. <laughs> and for a while, like, I had this patchy ass shit here. I had a shitty ass goatee, but the mustache. You're like, is this what is stayed. not bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah so I shaved this. the rest and I kept this. Okay. I was like, there it is. It's a good decision, by yes. the way. I like it. That's Thank hard. you. That's all right. I wish I could get one. I'm going to try, bro. That's how you do hey, it, though. You just let it happen. Episode three. I'm gonna be here with the mustache. A bro. pink mustache, even, yeah, maybe. Yeah, let's go. That'd be fucking hilarious. Yo, that's a look, though. Yeah, sure. A pink mustache, a grill. That. Ooh, bro, I'm gonna All do that. All you need now is a face tattoo. That's right, bro. I'm gonna yep. get a henna, though. Don't, don't, hey, cut that part out. I'm gonna tell everyone it's real. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I can't touch the pretty the face, bro. My mom, she'd kill me. Even she's 90. If she, my mom was 90 and I came home with a face tattoo, she'd probably hit me with her walker and shit. <sighs> Sometimes you got to take those blows, you know, dog. Yeah. <laughs> That's my advice. Them, right? Sorry, mom. Hey, mom, it's all worth it, though. Hey. Look at I I'm, did it for the fans. I'm rich now, ma. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Jack, man, you sold 12 albums this week. I'm like, Ma, I got the face tat. It's going to work. I'm like, She's 40. like, get the fuck, get home right now. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> Come get, home right get now. Get home. <laughs> fuck your tour. <laughs> You're grounded. Uh, that's hilarious. It's it face tattoos are a tough choice though. I, I think they're cool. I, mean, I think they're yeah. cool, but it's it's a bold decision. Like you have to be for certain. I mean, I'm like that with any tattoo. I think it's dumb that it has to be like that. You uh, think so? Yeah, because if I have a face tattoo, I should still be able to get a job. Oh, I agree with you. You know what I mean? So I, if I if it wasn't no stigma, no taboo around it, I would have tattoos everywhere, bro. Yeah, I feel it's that. It's so dumb I have to worry about it. There know? was a tattoo artist I interviewed uh, when I was doing 60 Seconds yeah. named... Tattoos by Frosty. Totally awesome tattoo artist, by the way. Another guy that ventures between Flint and L.A. Uh -huh. Seems like that's a common thing for yeah, a lot Flint of creators LA. around here. It's yeah. Sick, yeah. But he does kick-ass tattoos, and I asked him about his face tattoo, and he essentially said... He once he realized he was gonna be a tattoo artist, he got face tattoos. Yeah. Because fuck it, like fuck society standards. I it was to show that he didn't agree with this shit. It was almost right. like a form of Counter protest for him. Type of thing. Yeah. Okay. And I really like that mentality. It's like, you know, you should embrace that type of shit if you really feel that way. Yeah. Like I know. allow yourself I want to do it. To. Kinda like what you were talking about about you want to look the part. You want to be a rock star. Yeah. Like, allow yourself to do it. I feel, I feel different. It. I want to look different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So exactly. The face, like, I do. That's another thing I would love to get a face tattoo. I'm not going to lie. For that reason. Just to be, like, make a statement, kind of, too. Like, what? I have a face tattoo? Oh, fucking K. Yeah. Like, what? I'm Jackman, Like, who bro? cares, though? Like, I'm loving and cool and everything. Like, you guys know who I am. Yeah. I have a face tattoo. <laughs> like, what's the problem here? Like, I go for a job. They don't know who I am. I have a face tattoo. 
So now I'm a fucking felon, like, murderer. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Same like, thing with piercings. Yeah. It's the same thing. Right. I feel like, it, or you'll notice that with, um, usually it's with older people, but, like, they'll see somebody working with a piercing, and they'll be like, oh, that's unprofessional. Yeah, murder. like, who the fuck? I can't, no, let me, let me rephrase this. When the older generation dies... It's going to be kind of nice. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Let me rephrase this. It's not, probably just as bad as whatever you're going right. to say. <laughs> when these motherfuckers die off, shit's going to be awesome. Right. <laughs> I don't mean it like that, though. <laughs> right, not like that. But I'm just saying. I get what like, you're saying, though. It's kids. like the mentality needs yeah. to kind of go away. That yeah, mentality they're too of old like, school, bro. Yeah. Way too old school. Joe but, Budden is a great example yeah, of that Joe shit. Budden, like, Joe Budden, no, bro. You <laughs> are fucking, you're not down. Right. <laughs> you oh, might man. think you're down, but you're not down, Joe Budden. Yeah. You are the fucking, you are the epitome. Of an old head. Like, like, you're the epitome of the dude who just can't let go of the bro, way shit was. It's like, oh, bro, stop. Like, like just chill out, bro. <laughs> like, people would just need to let shit move, bro. Exactly. And freestyle. Life's a freestyle. Yeah, exactly. Quit trying to fucking think of that old bar. You know, like, That's like when you stumble on a bar that was going to be hard. Yep. And you're, like, trying to bring it back. Like, no. Just move forward. Boom. Roll with yeah, it. Yeah, you got to go. With the beat's changing. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, hey, Island Boys got it right, if you ask me. What is that? With their fucking look. The whole oh, look. yeah. They, Those they guys right. know what they're doing. They do. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They're being themselves. Yeah. I like the Island Boys. Yeah, they are being themselves. I just wish they would have capitalized better. Yeah, Because they agree. were hot for a second, like way hot. Uh-huh. And then, yeah, they just, they had the song, but I never heard it come out, really. Because, yeah, you're right. They probably yeah. just didn't have a great right. thing going forward. And that, the problem is, too, with a lot of that viral shit I think uh, something similar happened with, I'm trying to remember who it was. I think Sparrow had some shit go down with Long Neck or something like, no, somebody told me they, I'm trying to remember who the fuck it was, but it's like these people got managers. And yeah. so like Long Neck and all those guys, as soon as Long Neck got popular, he got signed or he got started to get managed by the same guy who was managing uh, I can't even remember the dude's name, but he used to like squirt hot sauce in his eyes on Instagram and shit. He was popular, and they're from Cali, and a lot of these guys are in Cali. It's Sammy Sosa, maybe, yeah, maybe. They're probably quite a few. Okay, of these dudes. yeah, but anyway, but or not Sammy Sosa. Patty, Supreme Patty. Supreme Patty! Yeah. That's it, dog. Yeah. That's him. Yeah, I wonder Patty. where he's at right now. No, I he's back, seen... bro. He's is he? Yeah, he's doing shit on TikTok now. But that's what happens is like these guys, they have a buzz, and I think their management fucks it up. Yeah. They get managers. Because he fell off, bro. Yep, he and did. their managers tell him, you got to keep doing this, you got to keep doing this. It's like, no, no, no. Like, just do what you did in the first place that got you popular. Right. Which was being yourself. Yeah. 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 You were just bullshitting. Right. Just be you. Don't don't go, oh, now you got to squirt hot sauce in your eyes with Steve-O. Like, no. No, you don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, bro. That is what a manager would say. Right. Literally, bro. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let's get your own brand of hot sauce. <laughs> right. Like, bro, just make the content, bro. And the best is going to follow. Yeah. You know, it really will. Yeah. It's going to fall in your lap, bro. But... Like, dude, I don't believe in God, but I do now. It's weird. Why is that? I don't know. I just, like, for some reason, I think God's real now. And do you think shit happens for a reason? Is that what you mean? No, I don't know, really. What makes you believe in God? Um, what prompted that? I just that? feel it now. It's weird. Yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe that's a product of the meditation, of the spirituality. Might be. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I mean, I hate to attribute things to psychedelics because I don't want people to think that psychedelics are the only way that you can gain a sense of perspective. But I will say that in my personal experience, I have learned a lot through gaining different perspectives Absolutely. through those types of experiences. Most I mean, definitely. I think that those things have opened my mind to a spirituality, a religious belief that I didn't have before. Like, there's something yeah. deeper than just uh, us. I agree 100%. Yeah. 100%. To me, that's 100%. what God is. It's that humanity yeah. that's just constantly flowing through yeah, everybody. That's, yeah, I think God is just kind of like everything, really. Yeah. Like, he, he, but I don't think it's a him, you know. No, like, it's I don't an energy. know what the fuck it is. Yeah, it's an energy. That's the best word to yeah. put it. It's an energy that I believe in now. But and I kind of always believed in that. But what's kind of different now is like, 
What is different? I think it's that... That was the longest pause we've had on the podcast so far. Yeah, right I know. Because <laughs> this one... <laughs> I can't... <coughs> Excuse me. I can't... I don't know. It's, something's different, man. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I don't know. Maybe it'll, it, it'll leak out in music. It could I know even it just will. be growing up, you know? Gaining yeah. perspective through maturity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it could be. I'm obviously in the stage of figuring it out, you know? So this this will leak out in songs. I know it will. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Mm, this I think cool. that my my sense of my, my ideology in that way, I think that comes through music. I mean, I like to think of it like, uh, I think Kendrick says that type of shit a lot in his songs. Everything is everything mm. is something that Kendrick says sometimes. Yeah. And I 100%, like that says so much more than just those three words. Yeah. Because everything is everything. Like Man. it's one love. You know, like one love yeah. says so much more than what those two words say. There is one love in everything. It's one all love. one love. There's one not love. this love and this love. We are all the same love. And once you recognize that that is the same energy everywhere, it helps to see that love in one another. Yeah. You know, you got to lead with that one love. It's not like, you know, motherfuckers are so negative, dog. Motherfuckers, so negative. Yeah. So negative. People bro. just are haters at heart. Ah. It's not their fault. Yeah, it's, it's just what, what I mean. they see. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One love, bro. So you got to lead with that love. You got to show them, dog. And I think that if God were real, if God were an energy, God is an all-loving creature. God loves all of his children. Yeah. And if you lead with that thought process, like God would love, then... You understand that fucking that hateful shit's not even real. Yeah, it's not real. Like there is something deeper than than th- these the these thoughts that we have. It's it's beyond comprehension, and that to me is religion. Yeah, yeah, that's a g- great way of looking at it. Actually, I mean, I just don't like the set. I I think it would be human to to create religion. Like if life right. were exactly as it is then it would be human to suggest that there must be something deeper because the idea that this ends is just incomprehensible. Yeah, right. Very true. Yeah, so it just makes sense that that would happen. Yeah. You want to know what I just kind of thought of? You know how math is just there, and we create a math to explain math. Like, we discovered... So we create a math to explain well, it. Well, that's a, that's a thing that people talk about is, is math discovered right. or was it already there? Yeah, and I think it, I think we discovered math, but na- the shit we do on paper and shit is how we decipher it mm. and explain it. Yeah. But it's we our can human use, understanding well, of it. Well, yeah, well, no matter what, two plus two is four. You know what I mean? Right. But we just came up with two, what two is Mm. what plus is and what two is and what four is. I see what you're saying. We conceptualized it into something. Right. But so, it was always there. Yeah, so with religion, if that's kind of like what religion is. Like, I feel like it's there. It's there to be explained, but how are we going to explain it? And a lot of religions have similar ideas within them. Oh, yeah. That's why we, like, we arrive at the same conclusion, but it's a different thought process that gets us there. Like, a lot of it's a deity that exists. Right, yeah. But there might be one deity. There might be fucking 20. Right. And a lot of um, interesting stories from the Bible are just explaining everyday shit. Yeah, like, we're like just trying to make sense happens. of shit. Right. Like, why, why do the tides flow? Why is the sun in the sky? Yeah. Greek mythology is all about uh-huh. that. Yeah, it's yeah, always... Yeah, just explaining shit. Oh, I'm going to explain... You know, these stars move that way, but that one moves that way. That's a god. Uh It's a planet. And you got to imagine, before we had this plethora of information, nobody knew shit, I know. We were pretty smart for back then, actually. Uh But but we probably attributed that to the gods. Not not to this fucking, like, oh, I got a phone. I can Google this shit. It's like the gods taught me to make this clock. Right. And and, And I made this clock out of fucking rocks. Right. And that's how I know what time it is, by where the sun's at in the sky. Dude. It's like they relied on nature. They relied on the gods. Yeah. Rather than relying on a fucking clock. Those are Boom. the gods, bro. Yeah, they can, yeah that's cool. Yeah, yeah, man. That's true as fuck. That's we just cool. need to go back in the fucking woods and we'll become religious again. That's what uh, I say. Bro, just go live <laughs> out there, bro. Fucking, they're going to think we went missing or some shit. <laughs> we come out the fucking woods all... Big ass beards and shit, but it's only been three days. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck happened to you guys? I don't know, but I believe in Jesus. Right. <laughs> I'm going to 
gotta write a cartoon or some shit. Like, <laughs> I gotta come up with funny ass shit, man. I think it'd be. I wouldn't be that hard. You just need to get like a, a group of people yep. in a room. Yeah, that's we just it. spitball just like this. Come up with some episodes, characters, plot. That's how they do South Park. Yeah, exactly. Hire yeah. animator, bro. I'm gonna do this shit. I'm yeah. claiming it right now. All right. If there's any animators listening or um, anyone who could like fully animate a skit, a 12 minute skit. I will have a script ready by February. I call it Jack Manimation Studios. Ooh. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. All right, I'm on this shit, Jack man. Manimation. I mean, that's come on. Hard. That's hard. you like, <laughs> come on now, bro. That's too good. It's, that's just, that was, that's too good. That's too good. And we said February, all right? That's what we're hoping for. Y'all motherfuckers better hit us up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need an animator ASAP, but we got to get this script together. I, yes. I, I, this is going to be hard. We'll start with the woods thing. We'll yeah. find God in the woods. Uh -huh, there we go. <laughs> That's a Perfect good one. first episode, man. <laughs> That's great. I would say, though, like, it is true that facing nature, facing your humanity causes you to have those thoughts just like your near-death experience. Yeah. Did. Like, it forces you to face that reality. That you may not have faced before. Uh, a lot of people need those types of shit, man. They yeah. need something to show them that. Like that's why I said it doesn't just have to be a near death experience. It could be anything. It could be anything. But you sometimes waking up ain't that easy. Yeah. You know when people say stay woke, I think that what they are really saying is open your fucking eyes, yeah. dude. Don't don't be asleep. Be awake to the shit that's happening yeah. in front of you. I mean, there's always everyone. Something. Not everyone. Everyone, if they want to, should try DMT once. See, that's why I, I have a trouble with, with, with attributing it to psychedelics. I don't because care. Because I think people should, but at the same time, some people, I've seen yeah, them not trip. Everyone. And it's like, whoa, you should not be doing this right now. Yeah, no cap. Not everyone. Maybe a smaller dose for you next right, time. Like a corner or <laughs> yeah. one cap. Yep. Yeah. Because, I mean, I think so. I agree. I think yeah. that, I think it's, it's, it's. People don't realize the the perspective that your brain is capable of is what it really Facts. is. That's, yes, yes, that is what it comes down to, actually. Because it's not just when you're on the drug. It's mean like, oh, my God, I experienced that. And now you're sober, and you can use that same mindset that you were experiencing on the drug. They call it reintegration. Okay. It's usually the way. Uh, that's why they say you shouldn't trip too often, because then you can't properly reintegrate the thoughts mm, that you had from the trip into reality. Like you, you, you ooh, need to allow that to simmer. There's a word for this. Yeah. That, a, that just, hell yeah. I love it, because it's important, dude. I mean, I fell in rabbit holes before. Yeah. I've been like, oh, man, tripping's the coolest thing. I mm -hmm. can do this all all the time. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I had my own lysergic little awakening. Yeah. You know what uh, I'm saying? Same. But at the same time, it's like without that perspective, you don't really gain the information that it's because it, it, you get you have these like religious experiences, I would argue, yeah, on these substances. I'd say so. But you can't understand what they mean, mm. like you said, until you re enter yeah. reality. Yeah. Because then you start walking around like, whoa, so if that can happen then maybe I'm just in my own head. Yeah. Like maybe this is all me. Right. And maybe I'm just constantly creating all this shit, and I'm falling for my own tricks. Right. <laughs> yeah, and that is what you learn. But it's that's why it's so easy to learn that with psychedelics. Yeah, where in reality, yeah. I mean, even I would say that marijuana is a light psychedelic. Yeah, 100%, absolutely. Me too. Because it gives yeah. me that same sense of perspective. Right, mild. Like you're an yeah. asshole one day, and then you smoke weed, and you're like, Oh shit, I was a dick yeah. earlier. <laughs> uh, yeah, we I would say it's yeah, it's psychedelic a little bit. Yeah, you know? in the sense that it sh shifts your perspective right. enough for you to be able to look at things differently. Yeah, exactly. Whereas like something like mushrooms or LSD is going to hardcore yeah. shift that perspective. Like you have no choice. You don't got a choice. <laughs> yeah. right? You don't got a choice. You're gonna learn. Afterwards you're like scratching your head like, whoa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, but imagine like ne someone who's never tripped before. I've seen it like, a couple do you times. Remember, do you remember? No, oh, you mean you mean yeah, just hearing this? Like, okay, do you remember before you first ever tripped, and then hearing people talk about tripping? Like, what, what was it? Did it confuse you or? I was intrigued. I well, can see too, why other yeah. people wouldn't be, but for me, I've always kind of seeked out that type of thing. Because for me, hard drugs have never been something I've been interested in. Right. I've never thought like, oh, bro, I want to sip, sip some scissor right now. <laughs> never in my life have I had that thought occur to me. Thank God. Right? Yeah, uh, for real though. But it's like, 
to me, I'm not trying to get fucked up. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see things in a different light. Like when I heard those stories, I would always think, damn, dude. So people do that and they experience this realm of reality outside of what I understand. I want to know what that is. <laughs> me, same exact thing. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I want to do this. Curiosity I killed the cat, yeah. but hey, uh, I'm about to get murdered. Right. <laughs> Literally, I was like, dude, I need to try this shit. That's all I remember thinking. And that's why I loved it, though. I think that's probably why you and I had good experiences, because yeah. we were so open to uh, it. I mean, a lot of people who have bad trips, they, they're scared. It's not always the case, but because I've had bad trips. Yeah, me And too. then when that happens, though, again, I... I understand the substance i'm like oh well it's trying to tell me something right yeah like oh this is not unnatural this is just my brain is going in this direction for some reason yeah, right. i have to allow it to yeah, happen yeah yeah whereas they'll people who don't understand psychedelics or they don't understand they're not open-minded right because usually it's like those two things have to go together you got to be open-minded yeah. in order to have that experience because otherwise you start to trip and you're like, wait, this isn't normal. This isn't it. right. This yeah. isn't normal. This isn't right. right. And that's what your brain is supposed to be telling you. Right. Because it isn't normal. Right. It's your not. instincts are fighting themselves. <laughs> but instead, if you just go with it, like, this is why I, I, this is, I took a drug. This is what I want. Yeah. Let's see what happens. And you just go with it. It's so much smoother. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and it's that difference that allows you to fully understand. Like, it allows you to gain that perspective. Like, if you don't let your brain explore if you don't yeah. let your brain open up that shit's just gonna terrify you yeah, honestly literally i had a friend once uh this is how i learned not to make this mistake i had him come over and he had been wanting to trip for a little while and so i was thinking okay this will be fun and uh, he, he wanted to do it and he knew that i was an experienced right. user, right? Uh -huh. uh, I prefer mushrooms. I'm yeah. a mushroom guy. Me too. I no, nowadays, love mushrooms. Same. Yes. I'm, you and I have followed the same trajectory, yeah, my friend. Yeah, used to be acid. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Me too. That's where I started. And uh, honestly, it was just out of what I could have access to. I just didn't have yeah, any mushrooms. Yeah, I think so too. Mushrooms are just better. Like, yes. They're just better. Like How, how I look at it is mushroom, like acid, is like a big ass question mark. Whereas yeah. mushrooms are like, oh shit, I understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like mushrooms, and you get good high in your body on mushrooms, yeah, too. Yeah, like you don't have that buzz, that body buzz. Yeah, it's, yeah. like, nice. Um, you just kind of melt into the fucking bed or yeah, wherever you land. Yeah, acid just, like, it's fun. I think it's still cool, but it's, like, not as good as mushrooms, and it lasts long as hell, and it is a big question mark. Yeah. Like, what what am I trying to do right now? And there's now? no answers that right. are found. <laughs> Afterwards, you're still fucking confused. Right, you're, you're like, like uh, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, like, mushrooms, again, it's to me, it's meditative. It's yeah. a meditative experience. Mm. Like, it allows you to connect these dots in a way that you didn't before. And you're like, oh, shit. Everything is everything. Yeah, no kidding. I get it now. Yeah. That's at least my experience. Same. So, this guy, this friend, he's a little cagey. He's a little bit, you know, a little close-minded. But I yeah. love him. He's my friend, you know. We've been friends since forever, so I'm thinking this shit's going to help him out. Like, it's going to give him a sense of perspective that'll allow him to break out of that kind of... Because people that are close-minded like that, they're often oppressed. They're often, like, a little... They, 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 they loathe themselves in a way. Yeah. Like, you notice that. It's just kind of a running thread right. with people. That yeah, they they uh, see the negative and shit because mm -hmm. they see the negative in themselves because that's what they know is negativity. They can't break out of that fucking thought loop. Yep, and it just radiates off of them yeah, yeah. and I, I feel for him you know like bro please and so i'm hoping that this shit will help him and so i make the mistake i'm like all right bro i'll take five grams if you take four <laughs> <laughs> i should not have made him take you four four grams yeah and he never tripped before never before <laughs> So what happened? <laughs> so, okay, at this point in time, I was doing the lemon tech, yeah. which you know what that is? Yeah, but, uh, yeah. For those that don't know, it's you get lemon juice and you grind up the mushrooms, you mix them in there, you let it sit for about 20 minutes. It makes the mushrooms, the, the psilocybin uh, extracts from the mushrooms just like it would in your stomach. So it's a shorter trip and it hits faster. And it's a stronger trip. So... That's what I like to do. Yeah, this shit's fun. I'm talking five grams, all right? I knew <laughs> I was heading into hyperspace. Yeah. So <laughs> I like meet him. He gets there, him and I, and we, we set it up. He's just going to eat his. I, t I drink mine. 
I back then I didn't realize when you do lemon tech, you should mix it with tea. Because yeah, that, that shit goes down so much yeah, better. Uh-huh, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, absolutely. Every time I do it now, I prefer to do it that way. I'll do the lemon tech, I'll pour it in the tea, I'll mix that shit together. You can filter out the salads, although it's debatable whether or not you're getting less of an experience because it's all about did all of the solids extract did, 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 did psilocybin yeah, extract all from all it. the solids right. but obviously it's more pleasurable drinking experience to just drink the liquid right because nobody wants chunky water yeah <laughs> so i use tea what, bag use the tea bag tea bags know? work but again it's like you're you're extracting it but should you eat the salad oh, yeah not? well i'm gonna eat that so. i'm gonna eat yeah. it because i like it i right. want to go as deep as we possible we don't got to ladies and gentlemen you don't, you, got, you don't to. got to you don't got to i am <laughs> i can tell you from experience i have not eaten the salads plenty of times Woo! i've been just fine right. so i mean you don't have to but I um I do mine, he does his. And again, I then I wasn't doing tea and I got a little bit nauseous because I just drank a shit ton of lemon yeah, juice. Yeah. So I threw up. Oh, did that fuck him up when you threw up? That was the problem. <sighs> is he had taken that dose and he saw me throw up about fifteen minutes after taking it. Now, maybe my experience was mitigated a little bit. I still was flying. But I did throw up, and I remember it hit me pretty fast. So I tried to run out of the room and go to the toilet so he wouldn't have to witness any of this. But I didn't get out of. I didn't oh, get all the way over there. No. I, I threw up in the kitchen. <sighs> and so I remember, I, and I know what's going on. Yeah, you're like, oh no. I, yeah, I'm rolling with the punches, dude. I'm good. Life's a freestyle. Yeah. So when this happens to me, I'm like, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. We're gonna be good. I feel better now. I threw up. Yeah, you're like that feels <laughs> fucking heavenly. Yeah. <laughs> Because I already, it was already coming on, so that throwing up actually felt great. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it feels good to be okay. So that happened, and I remember I look over, and he's looking around the corner like terrified. <laughs> 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 He's thinking, like, did he just get sick? Is is this gonna kill me? His is this lung gonna make just me sick? Threw his stomach up, like, <laughs> and I didn't know that was the trigger until we talked about it afterwards. But for him, that was where it all started to go downhill. And I'm sure it's because he just he witnessed it. Yeah. If he hadn't seen that happen, he might have had a better time. But again. He also took four grams. Yeah, but so what was he just like? Well, after that, I remember we were sitting <laughs> in the kitchen, and again, this guy and I we're friends, but. I'm kind of more open-minded. He's a little bit more close-minded. And so he, we would have conversations sometimes sober, and he would just be a little bit more argumentative, a little one of those types of guys yeah. where it's like, Ur, no, you don't understand what I'm saying. Uh, it's like, bro, no, just chill out. Bro. Yeah. So I remember that dynamic started to occur mm. where I was like, no, bro, you just got – he started talking about going home. He started about talking about driving home. I'm like, no, what are you talking about? You're not leaving. Yeah, you, you, you can't do that drive right home, now. man. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, but he's you know, he's new to this. Yeah. And so that, it's just funny to me because that never happens to me when I'm, I never think about getting in my car. <laughs> right. Like, dude, I'm <laughs> tripping balls. I'm going to go drive to the store real quick. Yeah. <laughs> never do I even want to be near my car. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that shit away from me. So I remember he starts saying that. I'm like, no. And then he starts, like, like holding his head, like, fucking. And he started it. It was, like, as if. The shit he was feeling, he was placing it onto me. Like, I was the right, cause of it, yeah. which is kind of awkward, because I'm tripping, too. Yeah, you're like, uh... <laughs> yeah. And he's like, shut up, shut up, shut up, talking to me. And I'm like, all right, man, I mean, if you don't want me to talk, shit, <laughs> yeah, I'll I'm sit play here. Video games. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tripping, bro, I'm good. <laughs> I'll just allow myself to... But, you know... He, so he said he wanted to be by himself, or at least I kind of was sensing that from him. So I was like, all right, how about you just hang out down here? I go hang out upstairs. If you need anything, just let me know. <laughs> it was he, down, he probably went crazy when you left him. So I went upstairs, <laughs> and I'm just fucking chilling, bro. Again, I'm tripping too, so I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling good. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah. Uh, like, it's kind of hard for me to even sympathize with where he's at, because I'm tripping. You're, like, just having a good time, <laughs> yeah. bro. Like, I don't know what all that shit's about. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of how I'm feeling. Yeah. And I remember every, like, 15 <laughs> minutes out here from downstairs, Wyatt. <laughs> <laughs> so I come downstairs, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, and, and I'm just following his orders. Like, he didn't want me to talk. All right, I'm out. So, like, he, he wants me to come back, and he's like, he's, like, sitting in front of a fan, just, like, terrified looking, like, 
So, uh, like, we're just having dead end conversations, basically. Yeah. Like, he doesn't know what he's, to do. Right, yeah. And he's probably trapped in some kind of thought loop. Like, yeah. Like, oh, I saw him throw up. This is bad. Everything's bad. I feel sick. This right. isn't going to be good. And he can't break out of that. And so, after maybe, like, fucking four hours, like, we started to hang out, but it was still awkward. And I, st- I remember, dude, the dynamic was funny because I was sitting back in a chair just, like, fucking totally vibing <laughs> yeah. out. Whereas he's, like, sitting there like this. <laughs> like, <"Fuck it." laughs> so, wait, <laughs> when did he, like, when did you realize he was, uh, like, got knocked out, like, he was back? Oh, know? well, that's what I was going to say. After about fucking maybe four hours, I can't remember, it was a little while, we smoke a blunt, and he's thinking, all right, this blunt's going to get me back. This blunt's going to make me feel better. And we smoke the blunt, and he's looking a little bit better, a little bit less fucking terrified out of his mind. Right. We chill for a little bit longer, and he goes home. But to him, it was a bad trip, and that's all it was. Yeah. And so it's like, damn, yeah. dude, I, he should not have taken four grand. Because that probably <laughs> scared him away. He'll never trip again, exactly. bro. Exactly. Uh, when I was chilling in the chair, I was thinking, I was talking to him. I was like, "Yeah, bro, you know this is good. I think this will help you understand me." Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it did not. Yeah, not so, at all. So tripping ain't for everyone. Then that's the moral of the <laughs> yeah. story. Or at least if you're diving in, don't dive in head first. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> nope. There you go. I, I fucking should not have told him to take. And, and I. That's the lesson I learned. Yeah. It's like if you're gonna trip with somebody who's new, listen to them. Yeah. Like like understand that they are not you. Like maybe you experienced this shit one way, but they are different. It didn't work for him the same way yeah. I thought it would. I thought it would open his mind up. He'd be like, Yeah, man, you know what? I don't feel so depressed anymore. Instead he's nope. all terrified <laughs> like, by the fan, like yeah. Yeah, he fucking <laughs> Bro, I felt so. I felt bad for him. He looked like a fucking beaten animal. Right, you know <laughs> scared as hell. Like, <laughs> like don't hit me. <laughs> oh, that poor kid. But some people, that's, that's just what happens, dog. Like they just are not. It, again, I think he could have benefited from it. It was just a bad set in the setting for his first. Yeah, trip. yeah, it just didn't work out. And, I, and it was me throwing up. Too. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's it, a key really. part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> <Looking over. laughs> I'll never forget what it looked like when I looked over. Cause I, it was immediately after I threw up. I threw up, I look over, and I see him <laughs> peeking around the corner like a fucking... He probably looked dead like all red eyes when he looked over. <laughs> Dude, he looked like he saw someone get murdered. Right? <laughs> That was fucking great, man. And it's, to me, again, it was a great night. For me, yeah. it was a great yeah, night. Yeah, I had a good time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, like, yeah. Because I, religiously, I love mushrooms. Oh yeah, me God. too. They fucking, they're, to me, they're medicine. Yeah. Like, they allow me to break out of that ego that I get no, stuck inside no of. No cap. No cap. And, yes, cap. Yeah, Caps yeah, and stems yeah. and all. <laughs> Caps and stems. <laughs> but fucking, dude, I just... I really wish he would have, and I, I'll, you know how hard it would be to convince him again? Oh, yeah. Oh, like, bro, come on, just one more time. <laughs> no, <you're> right. <laughs> come on. He's like, if I'm never doing that shit again. Like, with you? Right. He's probably yeah. with you. He's like, you he crazy says, ass? Yeah. <laughs> Five grams. Make me take four. <laughs> just one more time, man. That's funny. He should have done one. He should have done yeah, one gram. Yeah, just one gram. See how you feel. And then next time, he'll take like two or exactly. something. Exactly. Yeah. Fucking, yeah. Maybe even a half a gram. Right. But that's because he's not the guy that takes five grams. I <sighs> am. So it's like, you know. I would have took, took five, too. I'm that I type of guy. Yeah. I lo- dude, I love when people are on my level. That's Me what too. I, that's kind of what I wanted. Right. I just wanted him to be You're on like, my uh, level. Here, you can take four. Right? Exactly. You're like, right, this will be great. I'll be tripping balls. I'll be tripping balls. <laughs> You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, bro, just come on. I don't want to be the highest guy in the room. Right. I don't want to be the highest in the room. I'm not Travis Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just in the room. <laughs> That's funny, you feel. I tried. I tried. And I've had this happen with other friends, too. Not that experience, but, like, it's hard to get people to take five grams with you, believe it or not. People are scared by five grams. Yeah, because an eighth can be a lot sometimes. And, it, and it's it's uh, exponential with, right. with mushrooms. Yeah. Like, five grams is not double two and a half. Right. It's, like, fucking four times yeah, two and a half. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. That's why... I, I, 
Dude, I'm wild. I'll take like seven grams. I don't give a fuck. Dude, what if you, but yeah, I'll take seven grams. I've done, that's the most I've ever taken. But they I were. I did 10.5 recently. Nah, Woo! Of good mushrooms? Um, like, uh, or decent mushrooms? Decent. Damn. I was soaring. But yeah, anyway, anyway, seven's your highest? No, no, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> yeah, it was seven of decent mushrooms, though. Yeah. Like, like, just decent mushrooms. Yeah, if I took strong s- mushrooms is scary. Yeah, bro, because I've eaten an eighth of some mushrooms that was my hardest trip ever. It was only eight. Mm-hmm. I was like, Whoa. Yes. Like, that, these mushrooms are nuts. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I had it. I only, and then, dude, I, I bought them from some random guy, basically. Yeah. So I can never find them again. They're the best mushrooms in the world. That's my problem is the best mushrooms I ever had, it was a bad that I, I I I ran through it. I yeah. can't get it back, baby. Right. I can't get it back. But I, I didn't know own. how good they were until afterwards. Yeah, you're like, oh, yeah. These are I'm like, special. oh, I gotta take double of this other one in order to get where I was yeah, with that one. Literally. Yeah. But how was your seven gram trip? How was that? It was nuts, bro. Yeah. It was. I was tripping balls. Like, <laughs> do you have any significant memories from it? Um, yeah. The one thing I remember the most from that trip was the oh the visuals were crazy. And I was at this little get together thing when I ate them, <laughs> believe it or not. And they were playing ping pong, and they'd throw the ball, and it had green tracers like <clears throat> this long. And everyone had three eyes like one, two, three, and like four hands, kind of like it was hands like that came out like this. You know? Oh my god, and that was like for like an hour, they all looked like that. <laughs> and I was like, damn, <laughs> like, you guys are aliens. <laughs> 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 For real. You guys are aliens. They're like, what? Nobody knew I ate mushrooms. I'm like, oh, so you, damn. Yeah. So you took seven around people who did, weren't even tripping and they didn't know you were tripping. Yeah. Now that's brave. That was fun, though. Because oh, I told brave. them like halfway through and they're like, oh. It made everything make sense. Yeah. Like, like, Bro, no. we thought you were on crack. Yeah, I was like, got you guys. <laughs> now I'm just tripping balls. <laughs> Because that's the thing. I've tried that before. It's so hard to trip around sober people and, and not give them. I know. You know, you, you, you're so. Because beforehand, you're thinking, I can do this. Uh-huh. I can do this. But when you're in that moment, yeah. it is so hard to hide it. No cap. And, like, you think you're doing a good job, but you're not. You're, you're not. not. <laughs> you're like, you might, you're, like, you're sitting there, just, like, chilling, but your face is, like, right. <laughs> doing all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> For real though, that's fucking funny. You just ain't in control no more. Like somebody took over the battleship, dog. Yeah, like, the You're just sitting in the doing? passenger seat now. Yeah, like I used to go to the mall <laughs> tripping all the time. See, that's brave too to me, cause I'm a, I'm a trip alone kind of guy. I love tripping alone now. Yeah, this is all like in my adolescence. Ah, you know? yes. Seventeen, eighteen. Those lethargic days. Yeah, literally. Yes. But now I just like the other day, me and little Chrissy. He came up to my house in Grand Haven. We both, we split a quarter and we recorded music. Let's go. It's perfect, bro. That's how I like the trip. Me too. Just eat some shrooms, make some music. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. And it's an interesting thing, too. Like, I've told people, yeah, I wrote this song on fucking six grams of mushrooms. And they're like, what? They're like, right. what? They don't even believe you. What do you mean? <laughs> like, how? <laughs> You're like, dude. But I, dude, I don't even, like, if I trip and I'm on the mic, it's just crazy. Yeah, like, it feels... It's almost as if you understand the power that you have behind that microphone. No cap, yeah. Like, I feel like yeah, I yeah. get this... Like, I realize my voice is capable of so much. It's kind of this perspective I get. Like, uh, holy shit. Like, there's so much I can do with just fucking this right in front yeah. of me. Yeah. Like, I, I'm capable of that. Whereas yeah. when you're sober, you kind of just fucking become complacent. You're like, ah, right. yeah, whatever. Do you do you smoke when you trip too? Not often anymore. Okay. But I, towards the end, all yeah. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Towards yeah, the yeah. end. But usually, in the beginning too, actually. I'll smoke when I'm coming up. Then I'll let the whole trip happen. Yes. I don't smoke no weed. But what I do, I mean, you know, but I, eh, it depends. I only ask because I've noticed that. Sometimes I'll be tripping, it'll be wild, and then I'll smoke, and I'll get this creative urge. Really? Like, that's what makes me want to get mm. in front of the microphone. Okay. It's like I realize, oh, shit, I'm just sitting here. Like, yeah. I should be fucking... Oh, wait. I should be no, using this energy. That's what actually did happen this last 
last time I tripped. Yeah. We were tripping, having a good time. We went out to smoke, and then we finally recorded. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. It's like that creativity just right. pops open. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny as hell. And, dude, I, that's another observation that I have is, like, I feel like I want to capture that. Like, when yeah. I feel like there's something creative happening there, I want that to be captured. I don't want to lose that in the moment. Yeah. Like, sometimes it's nice to just trip, but I really like to, like, take that creativity and make something out of it because i feel like that's to me making music making art is the most fulfilling thing so fulfilling. it really is so fulfilling it's like i found something yeah it's not even like i made it it's like oh that was right there right and i got it mm. it's like fucking i caught a pokemon or something <laughs> right no yeah <laughs> It is like that. It's hella rewarding, man. It yeah. really is. And uh, I feel like, too, it's one other thing that's really rewarding is exploring with your style and finding those different things yeah. within yourself through yeah. doing it. Like uh, the song on your album, Keep Moving. I feel like you tapped into a little bit of that Jeff Sky style almost. <laughs> Keep Moving's hard, bro. I yeah. love Keep Moving. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what what came out of me in that song. It honestly. was just it was it, it was almost like more of a laid back type of thing than your usual shit. Like you really settled into that. Right. Whereas like you know you do laid back songs. Yeah. But that song fucking bro. Right. But, like, it's almost like why, why I say Jeff Sky is because Jeff Sky is just kind of yeah, got that laid back type shit. of vibe and it's right. all what he does. And I'm on that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Jackman was on his Jeff bag that yeah, day. Yeah. Okay. I, that's a big compliment. <laughs> Jeff Sky is a big idol of mine actually. Bro. Bro, like I love Jeff Sky. That's my dog. Me and him are actually he's um directing a music video for me, a Christmas music video. No shit. Yeah. He directs videos? I for I hit him up because for I me. Because, <laughs> not even like that though. I, I you feel me? I hit him up like his videos are crazy. He, I said I need you to direct a music video for me. So I hired him to direct this video. It's gonna be hard. His videos are that's what I love about Jeff Sky's shit. And I think Jeff Jeff and a few other select individuals stick out to me in the city more than anybody. And uh, I think that what it is really is he doesn't fucking half-ass shit ever. That's never. what gets me. Is yeah. A lot of people, they'll put shit out just to get shit out. You never get that sense with him. It's like mm -hmm. he's really putting himself into the shit he makes. And his visuals are the same exact way. Yeah. Like It's not like he's just riding by or and, and it's consistent too he's consistent and he's consistent in quality and he has been for a while for a while not a year or two like for years you yeah know, since before 2016 for sure and he's got his own voice yeah jeff is really underrated to be honest like he, the ones who know know but he deserves a lot more credit as a pioneer and i know? think that like the thing about him too is i he, I get the sense from his Facebook and shit, he's just like you and I. We all, all artists. Yeah, Jeff's funny as hell. He's yeah. cool. Like, he's a good friend of mine, too, yes. though. Like, shout out Jeff Sky. Shout you know, out Jeff Sky. Shout Jeff, out Jeff Sky. I've said it. A <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Jeff Sky! <laughs> Jeff, I've said it a million times. I mention you on the podcast all the time. Please get on this shit, dog. I uh, want you so bad. Yeah. I want you, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. And I mean that as weird as you want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see Jeff on a podcast. He has a lot of good things to say, too. He's It'd done the cool. laid-back-ass podcast Well, a yeah, times. exactly. Yeah, his, yeah. yeah, that podcast, those episodes are cool. Him and Fig and all of them on there. Uh, it's a, that's a nice podcast. I, I watched a few episodes. I didn't get to watch it as much as I wanted to. <laughs> my, my only complaint is it's a little bit too laid back for me. Yeah. I'm a little crackhead, dog. Right. I, need, I need to get some stimulation. <laughs> Those like, motherfuckers will literally just chill and not say anything for a minute. <laughs> you're like, damn, this laid back podcast really is laid back. <laughs> <laughs> like, they ain't lying in the title. That's awesome. <laughs> See, I'm like, I'm like an avid interviewer, you know. I'm like, yeah. yo, if I had you in front of me, I'd be asking questions. Right. Like, yeah, you, they don't care. They're just chilling. Uh, yeah. So, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I came in there, I'd throw their energy off. That, they'd be I like, wait a minute, too. get this white boy out of here. What yeah. the fuck is this? Yeah, they probably <laughs> wouldn't want me on that shit either. I'm too jumpy, bro. Exactly. I'd be like, bro, y'all hear about this shit? Like, what? They'd be like, bro, quiet the fuck down. Damn, Jack. He ain't coming to the cookout. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'd be cooking my ass sometimes, bro. I'm on Jeff Sky's head, bro. I Ugly thought it was boy. funny once. <laughs> uh, you posted something, and Jeff commented, bro, you just be saying anything. <laughs> 
I was like, damn, Jeff. <laughs> no, if I ever see a notification and Jeff commented on something that's not like a piece of music, I know he's cooking me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real. It's hilarious, bro. I made the mistake. See, I think I fucking, I burnt bridges on accident um, about two years ago. And fucking, dude, I'll say this publicly right now. If you knew me on Facebook in 2020 to 2021, that was not me, okay? I was locked in my house. Okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm a fucking like psychopath. Down. So anything I said at that point in time, I want no credit for. <laughs> yeah, bro. And the good thing about being a human is if you want to retract statements and be like, hey, I don't feel this way anymore. I've always like, okay, bet. Yeah. Like people change, bro. Like that's really true. You know what I mean? Like if I give anyone second chances, like we need a, well, it's forgiveness. Fuck. Yeah, exactly. Like I said earlier, forgiveness, bro. Yeah. People, I don't. I'm not the same person I was two years ago. I'm not the same person I was last month. Exactly. You know what I mean? I'm always forever changing, bro. I learn new shit. I'm like, oh, so yeah. And the way I look at it too is like, think about who like. From whoever it is listening, think about who you were a year ago. Like you're always gonna judge that person yeah. because you're never who you are yeah, now. Yeah, literally. And so it's like you can't look at other people that way. Like if yeah. somebody said some shit two years ago that you thought was weird, yeah, they were someone else. Two yeah, years that's ago. why I don't like the cancel culture shit unless you do something bad as fuck. Like yeah. if you're assaulting people, assaulting. Yeah, if like you hurt, hurt someone somebody, else physically, is yeah, how I then, look at it. Yeah, then you're done. Yeah. But just saying things, I give people just second chances. That's just me though, you know. I think that should be how we look at life. Yeah. Though. I think you can only get that type of mindset into the world by thinking that way right. and pushing those thoughts into reality uh -huh. like the like preaching that shit yeah. you know yeah yeah Telling exactly people, getting it out there forgiveness is real right yeah. yeah forgiveness is the answer baby it is baby <laughs> and forgiveness is the key to happiness yeah no cap it, it really is forgiving yourself like yes you said, forgiving others yeah that is the key but <laughs> back to the fucking I think two years ago, I was fucking commenting on people's shit. Just fucking always had something to say. Hey, I remember seeing shit, but I don't remember what it was. Bro. That was just stupid I know shit. you were going wild on the book, though. <laughs> I'm fucking opinionated as hell. Yeah, I got all the opinions. What up? <laughs> now I realized, like, the thing is, you can have those opinions... And, and for, there's two things to it. First of all, social media throws everything off. Yeah. Like, if we had that same conversation in person... Wouldn't have happened that way at all. Yeah, no cap. Yeah, that's for true real. Slick. That's true. Slick. Motherfuckers on social media are always right, no matter who it is. Yeah, including myself. Right. Like it's, yeah, it's impossible. Yeah, to fucking... you can't have the human interaction. You know yes. what I mean? Like. There's a humanity to it. It's like, I'm looking at you. You're right here. Right. I fucking, I see you. Uh, I feel yeah, you. That thanks. shit's real. Mm -hmm. Whereas on social media, it's like, you ain't even a human on the opposite side of that screen. You, you're like, oh, fucking, yeah, you, you can see do them it. say something. Right. You're, like, you're just like, oh, fucking pussy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you fucking pussy. Yeah. <laughs> and I've had people I've argued with on Facebook, and then we became good friends. Like fucking uh, one of the previous guests on the podcast, Kevin Clouds. Yeah, Kevin. Shout out Kevin. We met through a stupid ass Facebook argument. Right. And that was how, that was our first interaction. And bro and I, him and I are the same, dude. Right. Like we both are just chill. We love people, yeah. And we just want to spread that love. Yeah, Kevin's cool, bro. But Kevin on Facebook's a different dude. Yeah, yeah I know what you're saying. Just yeah. like me on Facebook, I just no, I just try not to post anymore. Like if I'm gonna post something and it's negative, I just go nah. Right. I'm not even gonna post that. Uh -huh. If I see something that somebody posted and I want to criticize it, I go. Nah, that's not going to have the effect that I think it's going right. to have. Because yeah. that's the reality of it. Uh -huh. Like, you're not going to... Because I think what Jeff saw, because I remember he commented and replied to one of the things I said and said, you're only commenting on my shit when you're criticizing. And it made me realize, uh, oh shit, he's right. Yeah. I fucking, I'm just being like, an yeah, asshole. Yeah, I'm just being a dick on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> But it's so hard to realize you're doing that. Because yeah. in your mind, you're just fucking, no, oh, bro. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so, I, and, I and the other thing is, if it were in person, that energy wouldn't yeah. be the same yeah, of course, shit. of course. Like, I, he, if I said the same exact thing, he wouldn't think I'm criticizing. He would think I'm just fucking saying yeah. something. And then he would say something, and mm -hmm. I would say yeah, something. Yeah, and it'd be a conversation. And yeah. it'd be a conversation. Right, yeah, uh, but like fucking social media throws all that shit off. I fucking do yeah, it. I hate up. social media. Me too. I really do. But I need it I, I, for my craft. I know. Yeah. And it's it's 2022. That's the only way we can fucking get yeah, a hold of each other literally, anymore. Literally. Like, bro, I, I don't see a lot of people unless I see them on Facebook. Yeah, if I don't see them on uh, Instagram, they don't exist. Yeah. It sucks. <laughs> it does suck. I don't like that. That is how I know a lot of people. Damn. Yeah. 
It's like, that's not real. I'm seeing what they are representing themselves right. as on that social media. And that's why when you meet those people, it's a different fucking person. Yeah. I, I, that's why I love doing interviews and shit uh, like this, too, Getting to know though. people for real. Because it's real, man. Thanks. It really is real. It's the Kanye thing. Yeah. If people were to fucking talk to Kanye in person... They would like yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no they cap. fucking, they see his social media article and then they know Kanye. Uh -huh. Or they see one thing he said in one video. Right. Like Kanye's a really personable person. He is. He's very well good. Well-spoken, you know. Yeah. yeah, and he's a nice guy when right. you talk to him. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I, any interview you see of him, he's just got all these fucking thoughts in his head. And it's so hard yeah. for him to organize uh -huh. that shit. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you crazy. give that guy a fucking Twitter account, right. he's gonna fuck up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it goes. This is how, yeah, come on now. <laughs> it's, it's just true. That's funny as hell. It is true. <laughs> but social media is just, it's fucking, it's so hard to translate. And so, you know, I, Jeff, point being, Jeff, get on the podcast, dog. I'm telling you, we would get along great. We would get along great. He showed up at one of my shows. And, uh, as a local? Yeah, and it was like I was the last person going. I think he had just finished his show because it was the same day as Porch Fest. Okay. And so he walks in, and I'm like mid rap, and he holds out his fist. Boom, fist, fist bump. bump. And that set it off for me. Boom, baby. Like, Jeff, hey, you get a fist bump, bro? Yeah. And y'all y'all pals. Yeah, right? that means we pals. <laughs> right, Jeff? Right, right, right. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Looking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff behind the screen going, fuck, that's not what that meant. Right, dog. He's like, what are you talking about? Bro, stop. <laughs> fucking saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> but like the, another person, and I, I hate to call people out, but I, I feel like we would get along just fine. Figure the kid. Me and Figga are you like motherfuckers on Facebook. Uh, I can't comment on his shit. Because right. he fucking, he's not nice to me on there. <laughs> <laughs> Figga don't like me on Facebook. <laughs> I bet if me and Figga were talking in person, it would be fine. Yeah. But Facebook don't work for us. Yeah. They, well, like you just, the whole thing, bro, social media. And I think it's like personalities clash in a different way than they would in real life, yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Like him and I are probably just both opinionated dudes. And we would have a nice conversation in real life. But on Facebook, it's just like, no, you a dumbass. Yeah, no, you, you a dumbass. Feel the, yeah. You can't feel like... When you tell someone someone on Facebook, it's like you're telling them. Yes. And so when it's face to face, it's like you're just telling them. And then, you know, it's not hostile, though. Yeah. It's not like a hostile thing. <laughs> yeah, because it's like fucking, it's so easy to just be mean on yeah. fucking social media. You don't have to look at them. You don't right. have to deal with the repercussions yeah, of what you said. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, if I just started talking mad shit right now, this would not be the same conversation. Right. But that's not fucking how life works. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like people don't just talk mad shit. Uh, but social media embraces that, it. Yeah, it does. It promotes yeah. it. it really I, does. Dude, I hate it because fucking... I, there's, I, oh, oh, I could go on forever. <laughs> I feel like fucking everybody just needs to delete their Facebook. Yeah, for at least like a week and just see at how least it goes. A week. Yeah. You know? And yeah, it's also just unhealthy for your goddamn brain. Yeah, it is. That ain't bro. real life. No, it ain't. Nah. It's stimulating different parts of your brain that aren't, that are stimulated falsehood, like from f false, like yeah. false information, the false things alike. Like you get stimulation in your brain when someone likes your post. You know? Yes. Like just shit the like dopamine that. dopamine that releases upon likes right. is an unhealthy yeah. release of dopamine because it's, it's, it's uh, an instant gratification type of thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. So then when it's like, damn. I'm not getting that. You're addicted to it now. <laughs> You're yep. addicted to getting likes on on a fake, something that's not real. Like, what is this? That's not healthy, man. And like, the likes don't really mean anything. They don't. Like, that's the real thing to me is, yeah, you might have gotten 100 likes on this post. That doesn't mean you were right. Right. That just yeah. means people saw that and went, huh. Right. <laughs> that's all that fucking means. That's all that means. <laughs> but people will be like, People really be like that nowadays, where it's like, oh, this guy has 100,000 followers. I ratioed him. Yeah, I ratioed <laughs> Dude, that shit drives me nuts on Twitter. Yeah. The, yeah, that shit's not... Like, ratio. Yeah, ratios might suggest something, right. but they don't mean that you're right. Right, yeah. But fucking... Uh, <laughs> motherfucker, or it's like the amount of followers you have determines how correct you are. Yeah. Like, oh, this guy has a million followers. This guy has 10. 
So the guy with the million must know more than yeah, the guy with like, ten. What? No. Like no, dude. <laughs> like I said, broken clocks right twice a day. Yeah. I met some stupid motherfuckers that have told me some smart shit. Same, but I learned yeah. shit from everyone. I'm like, oh shit, you was right. I learned shit from little kids and shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. I like, love talking to little kids. Yeah, me too. They, they make got me realize. Shit. Yeah, same. They got some shit to say. Yeah. I was just at a Thanksgiving party Saturday. My niece and nephew were there. I was just chilling with them talking. And, yeah, they said a lot of shit. I was like, oh, damn, it's nice being a kid. It really is. Yeah. Like, I it, miss it. it. I miss it, too, yeah. man. I miss it to an extent. Like, my mom asked me once. She was like, do you miss being a kid? And my immediate reaction was no, which I was surprised by. But it was, like, the honest answer for me because, yeah, I miss being a kid with the innocence of it. But at the same time, you're so ignorant when you're a kid. It's almost, it's almost bad. Bags. Like yeah, yeah, you ignorance is bliss though. Ignorance yeah. is bliss, but like fucking if you don't understand the perspective beyond fucking whatever your ignorance is, yeah. it can get tough to reconcile with shit. Bags. Like it's nice to at least have maturity to have that perspective. Bags. Like oh shit. Yeah, I fucked up, but that's okay. Whereas, like, if you're a little kid and you make a mistake and everybody's yelling at you, you start fucking crying. It's like the uh, end of the world. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That ignorance is not bliss. Yeah, you're right. That's not <laughs> bliss ignorance right there. So I kind of like being an adult sometimes. It makes me feel less stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least we're smart. Are we, yeah. though? I don't think anybody's smart. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I I'm... think that it's fun to be stupid. I really think so. Ignorance oh, is bliss. Oh, yeah. Right. Like, the smartest people admit that they're not smart. That's kind of how I look at yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know anything. Because when I see somebody who's all book smart, I'm like, that guy would die in five minutes right. in Detroit. Right, you don't know shit. <laughs> right, you don't know shit, bro. Like, you do some dumbass shit. Like, yeah. Hey, excuse me, sir. Like, could you hold my wallet? Like, <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> That's real, dog. Yeah, I know. It's like, are you stupid, bro? But they have, they go to Harvard or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> and those motherfuckers legitimately believe they're smart. Where it's like, no, we're all stupid. Some of us are just a little bit, we got a curve on each yeah, other. Yeah, we're all like, stupid, though, like, yeah. to be honest. Like, but, 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 but some people, it's, it's almost like you can learn something from everybody is a good way to look at it. Oh, yeah. It's the stupid people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. if a guy's book smart, he's going to, and, and he thinks he's smart, he's going to assume he knows and that this other guy has nothing to tell him. Right. And that's a terrible way to look yeah. at life. Yeah. Facts, facts, facts. Yeah. Where it's like, you want to absorb whatever you can from that shit. I've seen a lot of people who are smart, but they're missing the mark. Like, fucking... Elon Musk said something once that drives me crazy. He was talking about when he the Neuralink thing. Yeah. And Elon Musk is a fucking genius. Right. I will admit that Elon Musk is very intelligent, but he's wrong about this. He says that with Neuralink, he wants to make it so we can talk through our thoughts because speaking through words is an inefficient way of communication. Yeah, like what the fuck kind of sci-fi statement is that? <laughs> yeah, that's something that somebody that is very anti-social would yeah, say. Yeah, it's a robot saying that. <laughs> yeah. Elon Musk is a robot, dog. Like, no, hu hu human interaction is an inferior way of communication. <laughs> like, all humans must, like, that's some, like, weird-ass Terminator all shit. All humans must speak <laughs> through their minds. <laughs> <laughs> Just Dude. because it's like... To me, what is a good song? What is a good painting? Yeah. It's the conversation you're having with yourself right. because the painting doesn't fucking lay it out for yeah. you. The, the, the person that's speaking with you doesn't say everything that you can think. Just like you said earlier, what you like about music is that people can take their own shit from it. Yeah. I think about conversations the same way. Yeah. I can hear a conversation somebody had and take my own shit from that. If we just all spoke through our minds... Right, that'd and just we be just be binary code, like it's one piece of data directly, that's how you get the information. That'd be like, what? Yeah. Like, yeah, that would kill everything. That'd be like social media. <laughs> yeah. And that what is lost in translation is humanity. Right. Like, we need that middle ground where we can't understand each other because that's human. Yeah. Like, when I speak with you and I'm trying to make my thoughts make sense, that's a human thing. And then you interpreting my thoughts and placing your own shit on top yeah. of it, that's where the magic happens. Facts, baby. Like, I fucking, so when I hear Elon Musk say some shit like that, I'm like, Okay, he's smart, but not with that. He just is obviously missing the mark there. Right. So even fucking geniuses mess shit yeah, up. Yeah, not dog. everyone can be perfect. Yeah, like, and, and not everybody understand. Like, there are things that people specialize in for a reason. Like, right. oh yeah, yeah exactly. I'm good at music, but mm -hmm. I can't fucking go and 
I can't go and create a fucking symphony. Right. I can't go yeah. and and write the best screenwriting thing of all time. I can't write a script. Yeah, you do what you're good at. Exactly. Uh. And you embrace that and you allow that to be your strength. You play to your strengths. Everybody does that. There's potential in everybody. Fact. You got to see the good in each other, yeah. motherfuckers. Man, and there's good in everyone. And there's good in everybody. Yeah. Man. 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 Bro, what's good though? Um, Can we rap? Oh yeah, we sure. can rap on. We can rap on here. Yeah, we gotta go round two on this bitch. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Uh. Hey, meditated is out right now, man. Hey, I'm staying meditated. I used to get high, damn, I was medicated. Now I'm hella faded, but I'm in the sky. Stars all around me, and they wanna really wonder why. No CSI, but I did not do the crime. I'm here to get it, but really, I put that on my vibe. My fucking Bible, ride around, and I'm in the sky. I let it fly, like zoom, zoom, the bullet fly. Who am I? I am that guy, no mask on. Mask off, or take your face. Uh, uh, mask off, so I'll take your face and then I erase. Erase a place, I have the people sing amazing grace. I'm killing everybody, they don't. Don't even got a grave I'm gonna put them six feet fucking deep quick fucking like a vine you could really come and eat I'm a zombie motherfucker gotta go get to that meat pause bitch you can't see <laughs> don't pause on me I'm the hottest MC that you could ever see Jetman rats like I'ma be everything you wanna be holy shit he's so hot like he's on fire that MC I'm so cold I'm in ice motherfuckers wanna be cold like J. Cole I bring pressure motherfucker heat I'm the huh. Coldest cat, save a tooth in the booth, motherfucker. I won't let it shoot off the roof. Give me the loot. Drive around in a coop. I'ma shoot. Ooh. Hey, hold on. Oh, this is off the top, baby. Jack Maras meditated out right now. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey. Say I stay meditated. Never ever stop. Yo, I'm elevated. Yeah. Yo, I hit the top. Yeah. These motherfuckers never know what is coming off my brain. Said it's so insane. Yeah, I did this from the day I was a little boy. That's where the rain started. Yo, hey. And then since that, I was departed like Leonardo, yeah. like Da Vinci. Did yeah. this shit since the day I was little kitty, mm -hmm. hey. A little kitty looking pretty I was really trying to get my hands on a milli Used to have a dime, then I turned it to a nickel Even though it's less, hold up I'ma make the money trickle when it rained down Yeah, like when it rained down I could let it rain on you and bring the rain down A new sound, I'm like Rambo, not Rocky Running up Philadelphia, stay, you can't stop me uh, You wanna pop me, bitch? I'm not a jockey, riding around on my horse My fucking tractor got horses in it like a Porsche these motherfuckers look at me, they say, of course. The white boy rapping, spazzing, synapsing, synapses, fucking snapping. Flasher than lightning, motherfuckers made it happen. Actually happen. This is me fucking watching. Meditated out right now, hope you watching. I could get it popping. What's a Gunda Goblin? Motherfuckers hating my creation, they ain't stopping. Yeah. I'm just fucking shopping, riding around my cart, my, mm, on the, uh, yeah. Yeah, catch me in Walmart, trying to get this shit, yo, saying it's all hard. I love everybody, yo, every single one. The one love in this world, let me get a gun. I'm shooting rounds off, I'm telling y'all the truth. Yo, this Ruse and Jackman up in the booth. Hey, <laughs> and I'ma spit this shit so aloof. I'm about to fucking <laughs> spit out my front two tooth, hey. <laughs> Y'all heard me, looking like a rabbit, front two two said I'm sturdy, said I know what I'm doing, I did it since 2.30, 2.30 in the morning till night, said I am, I'm getting hurt, see, this how I get my CDs out, this how I go and promote, y'all gonna go and see me now, uh, this how I go and get the clout, I'm like, do, 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 hey, that's I'm how. like, do, 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 they know what I'm about, I'ma pull up at your house. I'ma let it out, not Ay. no shots, just my CDs Bitch, buy my mixtape I was on the same shit, they won't flip the grip tape Flip Ay. the grip tape and do a kick flip They wanna hate on me, but they ain't this sick Holy fuck, you was Slick Rick, not Slick Rick or this Slick I'm the fucking hottest, hotter than all the tropics Damn, you cannot stop this Yeah Oh, <laughs> oh as it stops it As it stops <laughs> me, this fuck, I lied Fucking YouTube can stop us, I guess The only thing that stops us is YouTube Yeah, <laughs> YouTube Hey. Uh. hey, meditated. A new album right, right now. Jack Marat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Meditated. Said I stay high like I levitated. Yeah. Mm. I said it's. I said. From the day I was born. Yo. I said I would sworn. I said I swore. I would tell these motherfuckers. I would show them what I'm up to. And. These other suckers, they would never understand So I translated mm. 
I'm speaking my own damn language. Mm. So I'm feeling vacant in my brain, but y'all motherfuckers can take it, yo. I said my shit's tasty like bacon. Uh. These other motherfuckers, they hating. They never understand, yo. They looking like Satan. Said they looking like they the devil. I said blazing, blazing that. They be playing in the heat. Hey, I bring the heat every time I'm in the street. Mm. You kept me rolling down, a uh, rolling down. I roll, I roll it loud, then I go and roll it right this out. Mm. Hey. My daddy was a king, they killed him in the war or but still I had to bring all my fucking soul or but still I have the ring when I get a call from a fucking whore or she rings ring me on my phone, I'ma call her back. I'ma hit her up once, but I won't call her back. Give me my shirt back, I need my collar back. These motherfuckers think they on me, but they also whack. I am like the hottest in the game, the hottest in the game. I just lit a fucking fire off my cigarette, it flamed. When I inhaled all the smoke, it went to my brain. And now I'm fucking sitting here, I'm singing all the same shit. I'm meditated, no longer I'm medicated. All these motherfuckers hating, but really they don't got patience. I'm the hottest in the game, and they know that I'm hot as Satan, so they wanna fuck with me. The damn, I lost my patience, I'm the fucking. Yeah, and you can't stop me. Mm. <laughs> I'm out of words, but Bruce, you know what they heard? Or really, what is the verb or adjective or noun? The place where I'm around. Never thought I was here. I dunk, not out of bounds. I let my toe tap in. Like, really? He fucking in. Touchdown, motherfucker. Hey. This the realest shit ever, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out, Michigan. They just won yesterday. Yeah. Touchdown, motherfuckers, what I fucking say. Yeah. Every time I'm in it, yo, I did it every day. Yeah. Since I was a little boy till the day I was a was of age. I yeah. said I did it all the fucking time. Motherfuckers don't understand when I rhyme. I said, it's like I'm from outer space. This other shit they wrote, yo, I erase. Mm. Uh, come find my pace. I'm ahead of you, yo, a rabbit to a turtle What you gonna do, yo, I had it like I'm Urkel I said I was a nerd, then I did it till I'm cool Still, motherfuckers never get it They try and understand, yo, I could go and shred it Everything they wrote down, motherfucker, simple Yo, you just hear me over the bass and cymbal I blow your mind every time Like explosives, like this shit so sublime Like, uh, like I'm snorting that lithium I said it's in my brain, yo, I'm absorbing that shit in them Mm. I don't even understand it yeah. I said I'm grabbing shit from space and then demand it I just put it in my pen and paper then I hand it Two other people and say hey Look Hey, and I brought it to a planet A different planet out of orbit that they can't control It's something that I saw the devil probably stole my soul But I sold it once, I signed the X and no one ever knows oh. Now they fucking know, damn my spirit's cold I just turned up from the dead, I'm so evil, I don't know I'm the fucking coldest in the poof, save a tooth That's a cat, motherfucker, let me go and raise the roof It's a rat, motherfucker, a rat, motherfucker That's a rat, motherfucker, that's a rat, motherfucker that's a... Yeah, yeah And that's a fact, fact motherfucker. motherfucker, that's a fact If you heard it then you know where it's at, motherfucker. Yeah. 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 Hey, meditate it out now, motherfuckers. Yes, sir. If you ain't heard, if you don't know, now <laughs> you know. know. Hey. <laughs> yes, that was sir. a good one. Hell yeah. Ah, dude, I haven't freestyled in a while. I'm a little, uh, am I doing good? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, yeah you are. <laughs> uh, that's the thing about freestyling is like, even when you don't have a flow, you do. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know it's saying. like there's something there. Yeah. I know there's something there. You gotta roll with it, dog. You got to. You just uh, go. I just say shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, fuck, I'm trying to click these shits. Hey, Hold on. My my mouse ain't even fucking properly clicking. My my mouse ain't clicking. What the fuck's this shit in? I'm trying to do oh. this shit. This oh, shit oh, ain't even written. Oh. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, like oh. this. Something's about to happen here. Look at that. Look at that cover art. Yeah, there. that's hard. Hey, hey, hey. Mm. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Hey. They said I was an accident. I don't think they could know the shit. I did this since the start of it. Now I'm in my own apartment. Hey. They said I was an accident. Uh, well, how this go happening? Hey, did, did this from the start of it. Now I'm out here in my own damn apartment. They said I'm dumb, they kicked me out. I'm back right now, so get me now. One plus two equals fucking. 
Three. One plus two equals fucking me. Ay. I might go destroy my whole gang. Ay. I might destroy my fucking clan. Ay. I might go complete my damn plan. Ay. I might show you that I'm the man. Ay. I might do what I got to do. I might do what uh, 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 yeah, that's I might funny. do what I got to do. Hey, yeah. it's just Jackman and the Rose. And I'ma show you the fucking truth mm, I'm right here on top of you yeah. What you looking for, this what I got to do This in my hand, this everything I know, this the truth They mm. said I was an accident they well, said Tell I me how this happened then. Then, then, then. It started then. Yeah. Now I'm in my own apartment yeah. They said I was an accident How this going, it'll happen then. From the start of it, now I'm right here on my own apartment. Uh. Yeah. That shit is so hard in my own apartment, playing my own cards. Yeah, I was in my valley in the alley, walking through, seeing ghosts, but still they can challenge me. Hottest in the game in the summer. Let me write it down into my number book, baby. You was so fine with your number, baby. Let me ride around, hop inside my Hummer. Uh. Yeah. Been riding around town since the day I was born Hey, you're gonna see me as a star, I swore I said uh, I let them know Yo, you see me on tour in my own bus Yeah, I said that for sure mm. Yeah, said uh, four score I'm giving speeches, yo You want some more? Mm. Eating s'mores with my brother His name is Jacob Y'all gonna see this shit I did it since the day one Did it since the day I was a little fucking trike Little fucking boy, I was sitting on a bike Cruising down the boulevard I'm feeling hard, now I see it in my eyes Yo, I'm seeing straight stars <laughs> I said I'm spitting straight bars Spitting straight fire Till the day I was signed to a Motherfucker that can understand the divine fluid flow I got inside my mind of a blah, 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 blah. Hey. <laughs> They wanna score I drive around inside my Ford Focus four door And think about the same shit that I want some more like a million fucking dollars in pearls Like give me more This is the hottest shit ever My lungs are fucking scored From the fire that we're spitting I'm not kidding I got ten toes down with my cat My name Jack But these motherfuckers think I'm kidding hey. I'm with that they Oh, I thought I was about to go back I mean, maybe we stretch this shit out for a second or some crap I wanna tell them about a little album that's hard as fuck It's called Meditated You can hear it on Spotify, bruh That's just so hard <laughs> I like that. I that like is, that, that little that, thing that, I did there. That, that I mean, you followed my flow beautifully, yeah, my friend. Yeah, but would you, that, was a, that was a great melody. And you know what's funny? The melody was off of your melody, off of the album. Oh, yeah, I was thinking, yeah, yeah. They, sometimes I don't know what to do. Sometimes I know. <laughs> Shout out, if you guys want to know what that melody was from, fucking keep moving on the album by yeah. Jackman, Meditated. Yeah, baby. As I was doing it, I was like, oh shit, that is his flow. <laughs> it wasn't even intentional. Alright, it's just Ken J.I.D., Kendrick, J. Cole. This gotta be a good one. Fucking, as soon as my mouse lets me click it. You damn mouse. I don't know what's happening here, folks. Yeah, the thing moved. There you go. It's fucking with me. It's playing mind games. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Sometimes I feel like I'm walking on a goddamn tightrope. Uh, yo, this shit is fucking something I wrote. Mm. Mm. I'm smoking hydro. Mm. Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Okay. Bang. This, this is a confusing one right here. Mm. Yeah. 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 Tell me what the fuck I am Yo, motherfuckers just saw me and then you ran uh, Yo, I got this shit straight out the can Got it from my fucking hands Right out my glands like it's sweat Motherfuckers don't know, yeah, bet I'ma show y'all, I'ma give y'all every thread mm, Like it's yarn, I said it's hard, yo I sit this shit out the barn I said I never go broke, yo I'm like a farmer, yo Shout out old McDonald's, we going harder Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I fucked the farmer's daughter. I want to say shit. They aren't going harder. It all come from water. We all come from water. Yeah, motherfucker, fuck all your daughters. I'm on the hottest shit that I probably show up and just slaughter like a slaughterhouse. Where's the beef, motherfucker? Where's my order? I want fries with that. Give me fries with that. Tell me if you know what the surprise is at. Where my supplies is at. I pull up with a motherfucking fries and five guys with hats and gats and mats and blacks and bats and fuck your ass up and unless you give us that we the hottest shit ever we won't give this back snatch your chain take that shit and won't give that back yeah. so we the hottest shit ever mm. Yeah, you think you is not, you is not clever You is not even close, motherfucker You is not leather, we is smooth as fuck Y'all better get it together uh. mm. Smooth as fuck, like get it together And whether the weather, the storm Or whatever weather, the hottest shit If it's hot, I won't take my sweater If it's cold, I'ma bring a coat If I'm on a boat or a yacht Where I can't elope I hopefully got my alpine skis To hit the slope The real shit, like a cantaloupe I can't elope with the shit you shoved down my throat, pause. No gay shit, no of course, but that's okay to me. If I fly, I might be free and see the sky. No surprise that my eyes are free and glued to the screen. The same shit like Listerine that I'm too clean. I come up and show your beam and got my gat. A big gun with no two beams and two green beams that probably poke both your spleens. The same shit I did since I was 18. I'm not 18, I meant when I was 18. A true adult, the hardest shit that's at my fault. That I stomp the ground, leave cracks like the San Andreas fault. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Watch out your mama, he be stepping on cracks mm. Yo, your motherfuckers thought you had it well With motherfuckers we is getting it back yeah. Mm. yeah, I said we's getting so hard Motherfuckers gonna see us and think we shooting porn uh. <laughs> Every time I spit this shit, this shit is so flames Yo, yo, your brain is scorned uh. <laughs> So hard like a boner <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so hard like a boner. <laughs> Meditate it out now. Meditate it out now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I'm glad we did this. This looks scary. We almost didn't rat. Oh, yeah, Damn, yeah. Bro. Hell yeah. <laughs> He's spazzing on <my> boy. <laughs> He's spazzing, bro. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Oh. Uh. Give me the loot when I run out. Give me the loot. Give me the loot when I run out. Hold on. Hey. Give me the loot when I run out. Give me my gun when I shoot. Give me another clip if when I shoot and then run out. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Give me the loot when I run out. Give me the loot. Give me the loot. Give me the loot when I run out. Give me the loot when I run out. Give me my gun and my shootout. Hit me another clip if when I shoot. When if I shoot and then run out. Sets my gun when I shoot I be popping off motherfuckers They be feeling who They be not understanding I be telling y'all the truth Yo, y'all want it? I be right here Giving you the boo I said, here you go Every time I spit It's like Imperial Said it's like that shit Yo, don't understand It's like I'm spitting spiral Said you hear me on title I said I got that wave Motherfucker I'm going viral uh. I'm going viral Wait, no, I am suicidal I put the gun to my head And my bonus spin got a spiral And you know that I got this And damn, I am my own idol I am standing on top of star My X-Factor American Idol uh. <laughs> Hottest shit up in the game, you know that I got the flame I bring it around, damn, I'm going insane But nobody got me on chains, this is my chain It says gold, yeah, but it's still a chain That mean it's hatched, really, boy, I'm gonna snap Holy, bring it, I'm a bre- uh, holy mm. Damn it, holy shit, I'm gonna snap Let me go and bring it back, let me rap it like that Let me rap it, pass it rap Let me go and spin it up, let me go and smoke a blunt Let me go and roll the wood, let me roll into your hood And just tell me y'all go shoot it up This is the shit, this is the shit that he didn't But wanna go act like he lived, I was just kidding I was just kidding for please, so please, fuck Forgive, please forgive. This is ah! yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Say, Lord, forgive me. I do not know what I've done. Every flow that I spit, I walk so y'all can run. Every time I did it, yo, y'all is my little son. Said y'all's my little cousins. So let's all get it done. Uh. Give me the loot. Give, give me the loot. loot. Give me the. Give me the loot. Give, give me the loot. loot. Give me the loot when I woo. Give, give me the loot. loot. Give me my gun when I shoot. Ooh. Give me a magazine when I shoot. Give me the loot. Mm. I need a magazine. Mm. I need a little bit. 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 Mm. I need a little bit.
need a little bit gun. I'ma go get your beat on. I'ma go shoot your bitch on. Yeah. I'ma go do this shit on. Yeah. Y'all even understand on. Yeah. I'ma go get this shit on. Yeah. These motherfuckers don't see me. Huh? Well, I don't see them. Mm, these motherfuckers don't see we. Yeah. We in the fucking ice. Uh, we yeah. in space. We going fucking irate. We flopping down. Y'all motherfuckers gonna see us in the rocket now. <laughs> Rocket ship, I was just taking off of this Fuck Elon, I'm top of shit X Factor, I'm on top of this Yeah, yeah, that shit is real Told the motherfucker I can't chill If you wanna go give me a bill Then I'll probably go sip that real Sip that shit, that shit, that drill I got two lines poured up Got a bad bitch with a whore's at mm, Damn, where the fucking whore's at mm, Get a fucking hat with a mm, uh, uh, Put her face down with the whore up I'm on the fucker, it's so good Tear wig off and I choked her Yeah, yeah Tear wig good Yeah Give me the loot, give me the loot, give me the gun when I shoot. <laughs> give me the loot, give me the loot, I give me the gun when I shoot. Yeah. Give me the loot, give yeah. me the loot. Motherfuckers yeah. don't see, give me the proof. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> those songs are fun as hell. <laughs> that was good shit, dude. <laughs> good. One of these is gonna be our next hit single. Oh God, we we'll like, yo, let's record go. that one. Thank God we got it on video. Go. Like that, like that beat. Like that beat. Yeah, I will. Yeah. I will. That shit was hard as hell. hell yeah. Shout out Lakes. Dude, this guy's got 8.1k subscribers. Oh, I love finding people like that, yeah. though. Fuck, I'm subscribed. Yeah, I'm subscribed to this. Subscribe to this. Oh, yeah. Yo, shout out Lakes on YouTube, because that shit was hard as hell. This guy is, does not have as big of a following as he should. Yeah, that was super good. God damn. Actually, you know what? We should just do another one of his pieces. Yeah, see what he's got. I got some good shit. Let's see. Let's see. Not a lot. I like it. I like it. Okay. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at this song, this I like. If I could tell myself I would, if I could go back, well, maybe then I could, if I could. If I could write myself a note, I'd tell myself everything that he ought to know. Damn! The yeah. drum is fucking hard, that bro. Was hard as hell. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Hey. Yeah. If I could write myself a letter, I'd tell my little self, yo, everything will get better. Uh. Uh. If I could write myself a story, I'd say, yeah, man, this world's pretty fucking gory. Yeah. You're gonna see some blood, yeah, you gonna see some cuts. But in your cuts, you gonna show them fuckers what is up, uh. You gonna show them, motherfucker, so don't get caught in the moment too much, you little sucker, um. Hey, sometimes our wrist twist will slit us and we'll wisp you to the other side of wisdom. The same shit that I mixed up and slipped up. Pop pills and claim that shit was a mix up. This the hottest shit that we didn't do, but I fixed up. Mama clean now, mama, I'm fucking clean now. I can put the alcohol and Listerine down so you can see me smile. Mama, this is the same shit that I went through as a child that you said Papa going through when I was just a child. But now that I'm older and I can just see it laid down like a fucking map, I promise that I will pray now. God, please. See what I what I did, you would understand. I was a kid, I was a little boy, I needed progress. Mm, I needed more, not less. Mm, I got it, yes. Everything I spit, yo, I profess. I said I made it. Every time I did it, not faking. I put my whole self in that shit in a playlist. Mm, now these motherfuckers play it. That's how I did it, y'all mom. I made it. Mama, I made it and we here now I can put the shit down, I can put all the beer down Put the champagne up, this is our celebration Good food with less pork and less bacon More whore foods and whore foods of course But the same shit that's on my table is on my porch Packages arriving from Amazon from the jungle Mama, we made it but now it's time to rumble Hey, And the rumble is royal Fighting these motherfuckers, yo I said I was loyal I'ma fight for myself Said I'ma fight for 
what I got Motherfuckers don't know Well y'all is not You not what I am Motherfuckers I said I ran Yo I ate all my yams Because motherfuckers I can And Thanksgiving I'm giving thanks to every motherfucker that hate it Cause motherfuckers wouldn't make me If y'all didn't say shit If y'all ain't say shit Then I would Listen, no, listen, listen, listen. listen, listen If you only say shit, then I'd be a spaceship In space, just orbiting around, feeling wasteless If y'all didn't say shit, then I wouldn't say shit Or think about how to rearrange and stray shit And slay shit And how I come back and erase shit That's what wouldn't happen if y'all would never say shit So thanks, bitch <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bitch Y'all may meditate it Y'all made it I couldn't do it without your help Motherfuckers, you think you got me down? <laughs> well, well, you don't. Nah, <laughs> nah, you don't. Stupid ass. <laughs> Stupid ass. Thought you had something. <laughs> God, this guy's beats are fucking yeah, he, great. Yeah, he's cold. Ooh, click that one. I will. <laughs> <laughs> already on it. Yes, sir. Oh my God, I feel it coming already. Mm -hmm. shit slap yo i make this shit slap like y'all never even heard yo i bring that shit back 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 yo i make this shit slap yo that shit is straight up sir yo i make that shit slap 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 yo i make this shit slap y'all like y'all i never heard y'all bring that shit back 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 y'all motherfuckers go and say this shit absurd absurd this shit absurd, this shit absurd. i'm about to rap what you never heard hey this is my money that i earned yeah. when i die bury with me in a urn <laughs> Really see it, I'm a ghoul. I'm a goblin, I ain't even go to school. <laughs> I was giving fucking classes. Hey, but I was writing classics. I was looking at asses. Yeah. I was making shit passes. <laughs> I was doing this shit straight in classes. Yeah. Did it since there was a day. There was a day that I was sitting in the masses. Church. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I was feeling straight ghoulish. Motherfuckers <laughs> looking at me like I'm foolish. Ooh. Yo, I'm ain't no student. I'm a teacher. Yo, I'll show y'all how I like, do it. Hey, bitch, a vampire looking super spooky. <laughs> me and her about to shoot a movie. Ooh. I'm a ghoul, I'm a serial killer. Hey, your girl pussy, I'm a pussy killer. Hey, I'm a serial pussy eater. Yeah, I'm a serial coochie beater. Hey, I'm a serial fucker. Hey, I fuck your bitch. She, uh, yeah. <laughs> man, call me the coochie man when I'm on this track. I'm Hold wild. On. Hey, so I was shooting a movie with your girls. I was shooting at her boobies. <laughs> Yeah. You're gonna feel me truly, like I drink a truly, then I shot an Uzi. Ooh, shot an Uzi. <laughs> then we shot a movie. After that, we hit up Tropical Smoothie. Tropical Smoothie. I got a chicken rat. I got a fucking strawberry smoothie with that. Shit was delicious. Yeah, but no peanut butter for me, cause I'm trying to lay off the pro fucking team. That's difficult. How you do that? Motherfucker, I eat all that shit that I blew back. I blew it out my ass. Yo, that shit was straight back. Yo, I'm talking about straight taking a crack. Ate a lot of Taco Bell and pooped it out. It's like I never ate it. What you talking about? <laughs> this ain't bulimia, cause it is coming out the other end. Yeah, this is... <laughs> this ain't bulimia, this is fucking straight. Fucking, uh... Something that's straight out of a scene you saw Out of a fucking horror movie Said this shit is bad, bro I'm looking down like Oh my god, what is that, bro? This shit is black, bro <laughs> They <laughs> Hey Hey They put fried cheese in my burrito That's no. already greasy and hella unhealthy Hey, I ate that shit in one fucking bite And pooped it out the very same night that's Yeah bad. I pooped it out the same night Looked exactly how it went in Right? <laughs> That's exactly right. Tonight, we're going back to Taco Bell, all right? I don't know about that, bro. I thought you said it was trying to eat healthy. <laughs> Fuck that. I think I'm a bad influence. <laughs> oh, that one took a right turn. <laughs> soon as he said tropical smoothie. Right. <laughs> oh, Can we do this one? God, did we do this one? It sounds familiar, don't yeah, it? Give me the loop. Yeah, let's yeah. give me the loop. Let's give me the loop. Fuck it, it just sounded so good. Yeah. I'm about to do it again. <laughs> like, oh, that's, that's good. Uh, yo, shit. <laughs> Damn, that art's hard. And if 
I lost you, then I guess I didn't know what I had. Mm. And if I saw you, I think it would take me right back. Yeah. Said if I lost you, I don't it's even think I know you. what I had. Yeah. Well, if I saw you, that shit would take me right back. Yeah. If I never even lost you, I don't even think I'd know what I had yeah, yeah. And if I never even lost you, I don't think I'd know that it'd be this bad yeah, But yeah. every day I still think about you, gotta wonder what we really could've had yeah, yeah. And honestly, every time that I think about it, that's the reason that I'm still sad Why I'm still sad Why I'm still sad I think I lost a piece of my heart I left it back there Give me that yeah. Sad, yeah. It ain't easy I said this world gonna break me apart But if, apart. if I had you right here Then I think we could go right back to the start Baby can you listen up to me Just for a second Let me warm into your heart Listen to me baby Listen to me just for a second Let me just repair our heart Stitch by stitch, blade by blade I'ma go recreate what we made Rekindle our flame Try to do the same shit But we know it will never be the same This is what is pain come to This is what the pain feels like If this is what pain has come to then I don't want to feel all right hey, this is what it's come to hey, I'm falling apart hey, I just want a little bit of kung fu a little fight back in my heart yeah just a piece show me what it was show me what made me complete I forgot I think I lost it back in the haze I, I need my brain, I swear I'm going insane Make it make sense Just give me one little piece, one little part Just make me complete uh, If I could just see that Then I think I'd know exactly who I was Hey, Somewhere along the way I lost myself I don't know where it was But I saw him on the shelf I saw him in a little piece, a little song I wrote And I thought, god damn that was so long ago I thought and I thought I could pinpoint it, the moment, the spot where I became voiceless. And it was you. And it was you. Yeah. That one was sad. Chills, man. That shit was hard, bro. Oh, oh damn. Yeah. See, y'all know I'm broken hearted. Yeah. <laughs> That's when the real music comes out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like to go listen to that shit again. That shit was fire, my boy. Oh, thank you. I, I like what we did. Yeah, there. yeah, me too. I'm yeah. like that one. We should make that song. I've been waiting for a slow song. It's yeah. like one of these gotta be slower. Uh -huh. Cause singing ruse is my best freestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah you go hard like that. <laughs> God damn, this cover art. Yeah, he's got them. He's got them together. Sometimes I feel like I'm walking in place Like I'm on a treadmill In my head still Yo, you see it on the paper? That's a thread still I'm finding it I'm finding shit But maybe I'm not, yo I'm flying, bitch, I'm I'm finding it And I'm climbing it And I'm at the top Okay. Now I'm shining, bitch But stay silent, bitch Styling. Cause I cannot do Cannot What you want me to What you want If you so fucking loud Loud But I'm up in the house Now making a sound I can just creep With people who creeping on me But it's the same shit Seven days every week They wanna hate But I wanna hate And we get on Twitter And we just retweet All of the same shit That I was just talking about Back in the interview That we could speak All of the same shit They wanna do now But they never could move So they don't move their feet They wanna hit on me All of the time But they don't got the lines So like any of the rhymes So how they hit on me All of the time But I just do my thing I'm doing my shit Walk on my shit With the cane on my fit But I walk with the cane Like my name was a pimp 
but no it was not Listen, I prosper, don't call me a doc Cause I need a doctor, no John Proctor Where I proclaim, same shit that I stay the same Either way, they don't know my name Jack man gonna let it rain Jack man gonna let it rain Get moving, never stop, yo, we get the soup to get the shit moving like a movie. Said you see me, bitch, I'm groovy. Shit have two seats, and I'm two seats. I be doing this shit, I'm a bruise beats, I'ma beat him up, yo go see me. I be too hard, I be too teeth, I be toothless, motherfucker, I'm a dragon, yo gonna see me, yo, my nuts is dragging, yo, I'm a cat yeah. of this bitch, both of this bitch, both of this boat, bitch, yo gonna see me, yo, you know trick, I'ma do this shit, I'm so potent, I am fire bud, yo gonna see me, bud. You if you see me, bud, give me a higher bud, ayy. Hey. And I'm higher, bud, but I'm on a higher motherfucking tree, so my fruit is better. And the labors of my fruit really gotta go and complete me. So I hand them out like a um CD. This is the fruit of my labor, sir. Could you cuz please take a fucking slice? If you don't, then I'ma hate you, sir. If you don't, then I'ma hate you, sir. You better call me Mr. My Guitar. Rock out like my name is Jimi Hendrix. That's how you know that I'm going hard. Look at all these motherfucking scars. I got stabbed and I almost died. Ambulance to the fucking hospital. That was one crazy fucking ride. Damn, I fucking made it though, and now I'm getting faded though. But just on weed, not no pills, and barely ever alcohol. So, yeah, I'm lit, is basically what I'm trying to say. If you feel me, do you feel me, baby? If you feel me, then we okay. If you feel me, then you do. If you don't, then fuck you. If you feel me, then I feel you too. Like, fuck you, fuck me, let's fuck each other. Let's see. I mean, I don't really know. I'm just like you see like hey maybe if i like just a tip just a little piece i mean come on come on you know you want some just a tip just a tip baby <laughs> that's all i'm saying <laughs> i said when i hop on these beats i fuck them up like fuck me like fuck you like fuck see like y'all gonna see like fuckery mm. that's just what it be and all motherfuckers ain't even touching me. John Cena. John Cena. <laughs> John Cena needs to do more rap songs. For Bro, the fucking classic John Cena, that first album, Word Life, man, or whatever it's called. Word Life. Word That's some life. basic thugonomics. Thugonomics, man. <laughs> thugonomics is a classic, man. <laughs> Seriously, though. Like, I wish that was just John Cena forever. I know. <laughs> I wish I, he never changed. Yeah, me too. I wish that would have been his whole storyline. Yeah, it's my favorite. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah, all right, <laughs> look. Mm. And as they were frolicking through the woods, like Bruce it. and Jackman saw a strange creature. The most strangest creature I ever seen Three eyes, all red, wait, no, wait, one was green I don't know, but that green one seemed to look at me And follow me around, no matter how much I hide by trees It still could follow, I heard the fucking thing it would swallow A couple animals aside the trail and I won't borrow Or I mean, I won't follow the fucking sound again I'm running, Roost, what you see? I need to find my friend I don't even know what the fuck I see I'm looking in the sky and I see something looking back at me Hey, yo, yo, this grass is evergreen But motherfucker, what we do, some fucking ketamine? I don't even know I'm looking around, where we even go? Yo, bruh, bitch, I ain't even smoke What the fuck I'm looking at? I can't feel my feet Motherfucking jack, man, bro, I'm scared, help me Okay, I remember, Roos, we took some DMT We oh, gonna so be alright, like this creature here is a deity Trying to teach us shit, at least, I don't know, trying to teach me It looks like it's trying to eat you, or trying to eat me Eat me? Eat what me? the fuck? <laughs> now I'm fucking scared more! What the fuck you talk for? Never mind, <laughs> don't talk no more! <laughs> hey, listen, man, I'm experienced A good tripper 
Enjoy the experience. <laughs> Bro, I'm getting kind of fucking delirious. I'm thinking about losing my feet and getting a fucking period <laughs> out my foot. Yo, this shit's straight <laughs> scary. Dude, I can't even look around. Hey, hey, I Bruce, fuck that. Over here, I'm riding a unicorn. Look at this shit, bro. This shit is fun. I'm torn between that fucking crazy thing over there and this fun shit over here. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this is the weirdest shit i ever seen. Why the fuck I take that dye meth the trip to me? Uh, yo, motherfucker said I'm scared. I don't even know. I don't feel very aware. I don't feel like I know if I'm here nor there or anywhere. And if I even care or if I don't, should I even share any of my thoughts? Oh my God, am I a fucking bear or am I a human? What the hell? Are we alive? That was a good point and all, but I just met God and he told me it all. He said his name is not Allah or God or anything that we say. So whatever you said, wait, I forgot. The DMT trip's done. Oh, shit. That's yeah. pretty much a DMT yeah. trip. God tries to eat your feet. <laughs> we did that shit last time. Like, something like that. We <laughs> we're, like, we were acting something out in a song. It was hilarious. <laughs> oh. I like, I like the direction that went. <laughs> it was funny as hell. It was fun. All right. We'll do one more freestyle. Yeah, okay. And then we'll fucking, we'll play a couple of tracks from the album. Bet. To, to kind of give people a vibe of it. Yeah. If y'all like our freestyles right here, though, I promise you'll like the album. Hell yeah. Hell no yeah. cap to that. It's, okay. Mmm. I got my boy Beethoven on this shit. Uh. Hey. Hey. Uh. Damn. Mm. I said I'm wicked when I spit at your motherfuckers get it vicious and I get it then I kick it, I kick it just like a kick big like I'm on a skateboard. Motherfuckers say more, say less. Yo, I did this shit like eight chores and I did it like I had to. Motherfucking attitude. Motherfucking rules in the room with Jackman too. See what I do, yo, I did it from the start. Motherfucking see me, yo, yo, I'm spitting from the heart. From my arteries, harder than me, I don't see them. Motherfucking see me like a coliseum. Straight performer, yo, this is the former. You gon' see the future by the time I'm on the tour bus. Mm. <sighs> the tour bus, I'm looking in the mirror. I see two of me now. I see two of me clear. I'm the... Damn, I'ma fuck this shit up. Hey, after this, I'll grab a bitch and rough her shit up. I meant the good way. Damn, not the hood way. Damn, this is ain't shit. Damn, it's a good play. But I'ma rap it. Rapping and rapping in fucking plastic. I'm asthmatic and happy that you cannot see all these clapping. Fans collapsing while my lungs collapse and asthma attacking. Guns click clacking. Damn, did that just happen in one show? That shit crazy, but we ain't done, ho. I'm about to shut the shit down. Hold up, shut the front door. Uh, and now it's time to just go relax. So, hold up, let me spit a couple of my raps So, spit my raps and then I relax And give you a couple of tracks Now you be happy, you be happy as fuck You laughing, you laughing at that Laughing at that, but this is the shit that I did It's magic, it happened a fact A matter of fact that I did it with no matter up in my mind No matter of time, no matter any time That time of the day, I kill shit And either way, bitches be hating but they wanna play Ah, words these are kind of crazy They come out of my mind Sometimes I'm kind of lazy Sometimes I'm taking my time Sometimes I'm kind of hazy Sometimes I just snort a line Sometimes I'm kind of crazy Sometimes I did the same shit Sometimes I gotta rap Sometimes I sit back and relax Right now I'm doing that On a fucking podcast This shit is fucking cool So I'm on that Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm fucking on that No cap but a cap Yo I'm on that Mm, give me one, maybe two, motherfucker fuck around, then I'll fucking find who? Mm, myself. Just rules. Yeah, just rules. Just, just us two. Just rules. Hell yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was some good shit right there. That was amazing. That was some good shit right there. I'm Go. glad that you asked. Yeah. Because I was, I was going to completely fucking... Not freestyle yeah. at all. Hell yeah. You I came in with a plan. You came in with an agenda. I did. I was like, I gotta rap on this <laughs> shit. Last time went so well, I listened. To, well, that's what made me hit you up. On my Snapchat story, a memory came up of me recording. It was when the podcast was already out. I was like, I love this part or whatever. It was me rapping. Yeah. I was like, damn, I want to go back on the podcast. We talked about cool ass shit and rapped good. Yeah. So we did the same thing today. And we've done <laughs> it again. History repeats itself, folks. Yeah, true that. So I'll pull up the album now. This is what he's truly here for. 
other than the rapping, yeah. other than the beautiful conversation, right. we are here to promote Meditated. That's right. Meditated out now as of when we're recording this just a couple of days ago. Yep. You guys can hear it on... What are all the streaming platforms? Oh, all of them? Yeah, it's on all the platforms. Yeah. On YouTube? It is on YouTube. Can we find any music videos? Um, yeah, actually, uh, Humble has a music video and Waves has a music video. Hell yeah! Are and, there any more pending? Absolutely. Uh, we're gonna try to get a video for the whole thing and tell a story through the shit. Hell you know? yeah! Uh, Y'all heard it here first, folks. And then, what song do we want to play for him? Um, hmm, that's a good question. Um, oh shit. Let's do Demons on My Mind. Demons on My Mind. This is with Lil Chrissy. <clears throat> the devil's way and I got demons on my mind all the time I can feel them crawling up my spine I can feel them climbing up my spine and waiting for me soul to soul to the shoulder that is debating for me my doctor told me to tell you to just be patient shorty and rock away everybody that's been waiting for me you waiting on me and you hating on me if you ain't with me so much white space at the end of this song is because if you listen to this album when you're like going to bed at night or something or when you just have your eyes closed the song the the music stops for a, lo- a while yeah you know and that next song is called wake up oh shit yeah okay and so it kind of just like brings you like i wanted people to really resonate with demons on my mind and what demons on my mind had to say so that empty space lets it what's that word you taught me earlier uh, it lets like with you tripping. reintegrate. It lets you reintegrate basically the experience you just had with that song. Yeah. For a second. And then wake up, wakes you up, and back, gets you back into the track of the album. Jolts you right back into it. Yeah. I like that. Hell yeah. 
And is there one more you'd like to play for the people? Which one do you want? Like, I would say shit. I would say fucking. Let's do Mr. Wi Fi. Hell yeah. like myself i mean yeah. I, sometimes i write a hook and i feel like damn like hooks are my specialty uh -huh. that song's got such a beautiful hook thank you bro like, that's the type of hook that you like you hold the microphone out to the yeah. audience and let them sing it you know yeah. what i'm saying so, thank you bro i love it yeah. i love it like it, and it's just such a simple melody too. yeah it is it's not trying to right. amaze you or anything uh, it's, it's just the fucking yeah it is what it is uh -huh. so just i to used like, to wish to be a grown right. up and now i'm growing up and, and I, I still feel the same it's so good it man. Is, bro. thanks uh, though. i appreciate it that bro. might be my favorite track in the album yeah. as of right now uh, thank you but i was very excited about that song so i love it yeah. and so were other people i've heard that from other people they really like that one it's i don't know what it is about it it's just like it's just a simple feel-good song right. like, i think know? i'm gonna push that one a little heavier now bro. I, that one might need a video yeah if it were me i would be filming a video for that one next. okay say less bro. Yeah. i'm on it because uh. it feels like a single to me yeah like, it feels like fucking like a chill out single song. Yeah. Like fucking some people need that, man. Yeah. Okay. They gotta be reminded. Yeah, like, yo, facts. shit ain't that serious. Yeah, bro. and it's exactly what that song is like. It's just like nothing it's not it's not that bad, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, before we get off the podcast, yeah. is there anything you wanna say to the people other than, of course, to go check out your new album Meditated? Um just yeah, other than that, um <clears throat> I just wanna thank anyone for any amount of support, little or big, whether it's coming to a concert or just liking or sharing my video, because as of lately, I realized I am so blessed. 
I am so blessed to be able to have a shot to do this, you know. Yeah. And that all comes back to the, my supporters. And it's crazy that this I have this many supporters. And I, I, I just, it's, it's, I probably have like 700 fans, but that's a, so many to me. Like that is so many. So I appreciate all 700 of you, 1,000 of you, 400. I don't know how many it is, but all of y'all, I love you guys so much. Thank you. And meditate it out now. <laughs> and thank you for being here, Jack. You know it, man. It was awesome. It was awesome. Hell yeah. Thank you guys for listening, every single one of you. Every single one of you. If you stuck around until the end of this podcast, you are a true rooster. All right? You are part of the Coop Troop, whether you like it or not. We appreciate you. My, my, that's what my fans are, my roosters. Dude, good. That's smart. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I need to come up with something like that. They're in the Coop Troop. <laughs> okay. I'm, yeah. a, I'm in the Coop Troop, baby. You in the Coop yeah. Troop. You are one of the top roosters, 100%. <laughs> You get the you're one of our. Uh, we look forward to when you lay your eggs. Right. The roosters lay eggs. I don't oh, think shit. So. Oh, Whatever. No. What's Whatever. This rooster here? does. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for being here, Jack. Man. Yes, Just like he said, if anybody at all listens to this thing, I appreciate it more than anything. Uh, every single person counts, and the only reason I do anything at all is to make a difference out here. You know, if I was just shooting shots in the dark and then one of them hit one person that's fine by me Amen. so thank you guys so much go listen to meditated and more importantly take that energy that you get from that album and make something yourself go meditate on that all right thank you guys so much thank you guys so much thank you guys so much i can't say it enough ruse radio clocking out